today's video is going to be jam-packed with DIY handmade ornaments the whole family can enjoy. Welcome to Creative by Nature DIY and Decor. My name is Donna. For the first couple of ornaments, you're going to need some foam cones and some string. Here I am using some baker's twine. You're also going to need some yarns in your choosing a hot glue gun and some branches. So I just made a loop and tied a knot into my string and then I glued it to the top of our foam cone. Next, you will want to glue that branch or little stump onto the base of the foam cone. I picked these up from Dollar Tree. You're going to now trim off the bottom portion of our second cone as I want to make a smaller tree. Again, same thing, I'm just gluing the stump to the base of the tree. So I am using some chunky yarn and I am going to start at the top, add some hot glue and start to wrap our cone with this chunky yarn. You're going to want to add some glue along the way and then just continue to wrap the cone. You'll want to continue to cover the base of the tree with the yarn as well. So you'll just continue to add some hot glue and press the yarn into place. Trim off the strand with the scissors and then again add a little dab of hot glue, press the end into place and there you have your first tree. So now you're going to want to do the same thing for the second tree. I changed up the color of my yarn as I wanted to make a green one and I thought this was so pretty. This yarn is from my local dollar store but you can get yarn at any dollar store, craft store, even the thrift stores. So you want to trim this particular yarn off and then they are ready to hang on the tree or use in any Christmas display. So today's video is a compilation of some ornaments that I have made from the past along with some new designs. So you will see uh, some different video techniques throughout. You might even see some text, but I have tried to include some voiceover where needed. So I am providing some viewing instructions for your viewing convenience. There are some video chapters slash timestamps for each ornament listed in the video, and it will be down below in my video description. And if you don't know how to find the description or what a timestamp looks like, I am inserting some videos here for you for your mobile and computer. So on your computer, underneath my channel name, you'll want to tap on videos and select the video you want. You're going to then look underneath where the title is and you're going to tap on where it says show more. Once you do that, you can scroll down. You'll want to then look for what's titled as video chapters or timestamps. If you click on the blue highlighted time, it'll fast track you to the ornament you want to see. So on our mobile, you're going to want to tap on the down arrow that's beside the title and then the description box will pop up. You'll want to scroll down again until you see the title of either video chapters or timestamps. And same thing, you'll just tap on the blue highlighted time beside the title of the ornament and it'll take you directly to the ornament you want to see. Other links such as playlists are available in the description box and lots of other information. So I hope this was helpful. For this next ornament, you're going to need another yarn. This particular yarn has a beautiful gold thread that's running through it. I tied off the knot so I wouldn't have any fraying. I, I'm also using a plastic Christmas ornament and I'm going to add a dab of hot glue to the top and then start to wrap this ornament with the yarn. So you're going to be gluing the yarn just as you did for the Christmas trees. So 
So I'm going to be wrapping another ornament with some yarn, but this time I am going to do a pattern that's very loose and forgiving to make it look like an actual ball of yarn. So I am going to be adding some hot glue, as you see here, all, all the way around. And then I'm going to continue to wrap the yarn in different directions until I get the desired coverage. So all you have left to do is add an ornament hook or some string and it's ready to hang on the tree. So I inherited a lot of yarn from my grandma and I really wanted to utilize it for Christmas time as I think it just provides such a cozy feel. And I thought that making some tassels would be really fun. So I cut a long strand and set that aside and then I wrapped my fingers approximately 30 to 40 times with this pretty blue yarn. I'm going to remove the loops off my fingers, place that string through the loops and then tie it off tight. You'll want to cut through the loops and then trim off the ends if there's any uneven edges. I'm taking another strand and then I'm going to wrap it near the top just to create that little clump that's always at the top of a tassel as you see here and then tie it off just in a basic knot. So I'm just going to trim off the ends and as you can see our top string is really nice and long. Do not trim that. I made two different tassels as you can see here and I have some wood beads in a couple of different sizes. I'm taking some tape and I'm taping the ends of those long strands of yarn and then I am going to put the beads onto the string. Pull the bead down so it covers up the knot and here I am using the two different sizes. Next you'll want to tie a knot off at the top to hold the beads into place and then about an inch or two up you're going to want to tie another knot and then you can trim off any of the loose ends at the top. This one's ready to be hung. So I wanted to create something a little fun so I'm painting these wood beads with some ultra glitter paint in a really nice iridescent color. It's called Ice Crystal. I'll have the link in my Amazon favorites down in my description box below. So if you want to check it out. Painted the beads, allowed them to dry, and then I'm going to string these ones onto our blue tassel just as you saw before. Aren't these just so pretty? I love them and they're so fun. So I have this little bucket from Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting down a little piece of dry foam and I'm going to attach it using some hot glue. I'm going to cover up the foam using some Spanish moss. You could glue it or pin it into place, but I'm just going to tuck it in around the foam. I have a stash of these beautiful florals that I picked up at springtime from Dollar Tree. I'm just cutting them down and then I'm going to start to poke them into the foam. You could glue these into place if you'd like. A lot of these projects that I have got throughout this series is going to be using some everyday items as well as things that I have picked up throughout the different seasons from Dollar Tree or other dollar stores.
I have this beautiful white crocheted lace and I'm just gonna make a double bow and using some wire I am going to twist it off in the middle and then attach it into my little bucket arrangements. I want to say thank you to those who are my regular subscribers and welcome to those who are new. If you're new, I'd love for you to be a part of my community by tapping on the subscribe button along with the bell to keep up to date with everything I have to share. I'm just adding another piece of the lace to the handle of the bucket so I have a place to hang this on the tree. And for my next project, I have this beautiful paper doily and I have a lid that's the same size. I'm going to trace the lid out onto this pretty pink copy paper and then cut it out. Once I have the paper circle cut out, I am going to use a glue stick and add just a bit of glue to the doily as well as to the paper circle and then attach the two pieces together. Once dry, I am going to form a cone shape out of the two pieces of paper. I am going to use some hot glue to hold the shape of the cone. I'm going to add a little bit of Spanish moss to the bottom of the cone just to prevent anything from falling right through and poking through the paper. Now I'm going to add some of those full florals and leaves that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use some hot glue to stick them inside of the cone. some white satin ribbon this time and I'm going to make a little bow again and attach it to the front side of the cone. I'm now going to cut a length of the ribbon and glue it to both sides of the cone and then I have a place to hang it on the tree. So I found these really cute wooden little green picture frames from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna be removing all the backing. I am also going to remove those little tabs that hold all the backing into place. I am now going to be cutting a piece of thick chipboard and I want it to be a little bit bigger than the back side of my frame. So using my glass, I just kind of guesstimate how big I need my chipboard to be and I actually guesstimated pretty well. I'm going to use some hot glue and quickly attach the chipboard piece to the back side of the frame. And now I'm going to be cutting down a piece of some dry foam to fit the inside of the frame. Once you have the size you need, use some hot glue and attach it to the inside of the frame. 
I'll now be gluing on some Spanish moss and I'll just be attaching the moss to the outside of the foam. I don't want there to be a bunch of glue on the top part of my dry foam. I'm just going to be cutting off any of the little strands that are kind of all over the place. I found these faux florals from Dollar Tree. They're little roses and I'm going to remove the heads of the roses off of the stems. I also had these little bits of greenery in my stash and I'm going to cut those down and I'm going to glue those onto the foam backing. I didn't want to add too much of the greenery as I still needed a place to attach my little roses. So using some hot glue, you can see I still have a little bit of a stem there to work with. I'll add a hot glue and then poke the little flower heads into the foam. Again, I'm going to be using this pretty lace white ribbon and I'm going to make a simple bow again and I am going to attach it just underneath the roses. Using that pretty satin ribbon again, I am going to glue it on both sides of the picture frame to create a hanger for me to hang this on a tree. I love how these ornaments turned out. They have a really pretty garden theme, very romantic and delicate and pretty. Let me know what your favorite one is. For our first a Dollar Tree gnome ornament, I have this light bulb clear ornament and I am using a lid from a spray can as the holder. I am removing the top. I am using a co paper cone as a funnel and then I'm going to be filling this ornament with faux snow. I have iridescent and little beaded snow. So with this iridescent one, it does end up plugging up my funnel, but I just use a sharp end and poke it through. I then put the lid back on and give it a shake and continue to add snow until you have the desired amount in your ornament. You can use anything you'd like to fill up these ornaments. I just chose to use some regular faux snow. So now I have my ornament all ready to go and I have this faux fur from my stash. I picked it up from a thrift store several years ago. I am just measuring how much I need and then I'm going to cut it down and shape it into a shape of a beard. And then using some hot glue, I am going to attach the beard to the ornament. If you're new, I want to say a big welcome and I'd love for you to join my community by tapping on the subscribe button along with the bell to keep up to date with everything I have to share. So now I have this piece of felt and I'm going to cut a square out of it. You can get felt at Dollar Tree as well. I am also going to be using this baker's twine. I'm going to first cut off the little string that they had to hang the ornament first. And then I'm just going to make my own hanger using the baker's twine. I just tie it off on one end there 
formed a loop and then I'm going to glue it to the top part of my square that I cut out from the felt. I'm then going to fold the edges together and using hot glue I'm going to glue those two edges together to form a cone shape. I'm then going to trim off the bottom and I'm just going to even it out and then I'll measure to see if it fits my gnome. And it does, you can trim it as needed or if you have to redo it, so be it. I then add a little bit of hot glue at the back and adhere my hat to the ornament. I always like to start at the back side. I'm just adding a little bit more hot glue to hold my beard into place. And then I'm gonna just glue the sides of the hat and attach it to the ornament. I'm using a pom-pom from my stash and I'm just going to glue that into place. I always like to tuck it up underneath the hat a little bit so it looks like his nose is just peeking through. So again, I always like to embellish the hats of my gnomes. I'm using the Dollar Tree wood embellishment stickers. You can color these if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it natural because then it matches the nose. I'm just gonna glue that into place. And there you have a really cute little gnome ornament. Just adding a touch more glue to glue down the beard. And there you have it. A really easy way to create a gnome ornament. For our next DIY ornament, I'm using this open-faced round ornament from Dollar Tree. I picked it up last year. I'm not sure if they have them this year or not. I'm gluing down a little wood stump to the bottom of the ornament. I'm just creating a platform. And then I've got this little wood round that I'm gonna be gluing in as well. But first I'm gonna add some preserved reindeer moss just in and around the base. It'll just camouflage that empty space around the base. You could glue the moss into place if you'd like. I didn't bother. I'm now going to glue the wood round into place and there I have a platform to create my scene. I have these little gnome figurines from the springtime from Dollar Tree, as well as these mini trees. I'm going to be using a little wood bead at the base of one of the little trees. I just need to elevate it a little bit just for some dimension. So I'm going to be using some glue to adhere moss on the top portion. The wood slice is holding the moss into place underneath. I'm now adding my tree that's elevated into place and then you just continue to add all your figurines, moss, your trees and just layer as you go. I really like these little gnome figurines from the springtime. I think they're just so cute and I knew I would want to use them at Christmas time so I had stocked up. I'm now going to add a touch of faux snow. This is left over from a previous project. I'm just going to tuck some in at the back and then at the front I am going to use just a little bit of hot glue here and there and I'm going to add the faux snow to that just so it doesn't fall out of the front. So 
So just to add to the rustic charm, I'm gonna add some jute twine. I'm removing that silver string that was on the top to hang the ornament. And I'm just wrapping some jute twine around the top there. And I'm just gonna make a bow. And then in replacing that silver string with a piece of jute twine, I just thought that it worked better with the style of ornament and then you're ready to go and hang it in your tree. I absolutely love how this looks. I think it's so cute, fun and whimsical. It would also make a great gift. And I love how this will look in my woodland themed Christmas tree. This is an old favorite of mine and I'm going to have the original video listed down below for you to go and check out the sub supply list as it is listed in that video. So as you can see, I'm using a small round brush and I am painting onto this faux mini chalkboard. I found these little chalkboards at my local Dollar Tree. And I started off by painting a little stump and I layered my colors to create the bark, as you can see there. And I find that with this particular project, layering is really important. So you want to uh, add different layers of color, starting with your darkest and then working to light. I'm creating little brush strokes in layers and working my way up. I am creating an evergreen tree. So once I have my base of dark color, I am then going in with a lighter color. And again, I'm just using small choppy strokes to get that definition that you would see in an evergreen tree. Continue to add your colors and layer them in. As you can see here, I've added another light color and I'm not covering up all the colors underneath. That is really important not to do that as that again will just add a lot of depth and dimension to your tree. So here I am just working on the trunk of the tree again. I wasn't quite happy with it. I also wanted to bring the tree down a little further as you can see here. Just continue to work on your piece until you get the desired look. I'm going to allow that all to dry and now I'm going in and adding some white just here and there and that is going to create the look of snow. Again, the original video will be listed below in the playlist provided. I'm going in and adding a bit of my green paint as that will help to just blend it all together. And now I'm adding a bit of white at the base of our tree trunk to make it look like snow. So at this point, you can continue to work your painting. You can also add some little birds or little ornaments into it. Once this is all dry, you can add the clip back onto the chalkboard and then it's ready to hang on your tree. For this next ornament, you're going to need a bottle brush tree and I had replaced the base with a little stump. You'll also need a sock in any color of your choosing. And I cut off the top of the sock, I'm rolling up the base and I'm just going to see if it fits over the top as I am going to be using this as a hat. So. I'm also going to be using a string and then tying a knot off at the top to create a loop. And then I am going to just use this roll here as a support. And I'm going to be gluing that string into the top of this sock. Now, 
I like to create some very unique gnomes and just in case you didn't know, that is what we're making here. So I'm just tying off the top of our hat as you can see here once our hanging string is in place. And I'm adding a dab of hot glue just to secure it. Here I am using some faux fur for the beard. So if you cut on the back side of faux fur, it doesn't cut through all the fibers. So I just cut it down to the size and the shape that I am looking for. And then I am just going to fluff it up and glue it into place. I'm just rolling the rim of the hat up as you can see here and then tucking the beard into place. Just like so. <laughs> it's looking so cute already. I love it. This is actually one of my favorite DIYs that I've done. So once you have your beard glued into place, you can then glue the hat into place. So I like to use wood beads for the noses. You can use a pom-pom as well. And as you can see, there's a hole. So I like to add glue there and then tuck that portion up underneath the hat. And then as you can see, there's a hole on the bottom and you can glue that to the beard fibers and that covers it all up. So now for a little bit of some added embellishment, I have this little Joy wood piece and I picked that up from a door store called Dollarama and I'm adding some bells just to the top and then you've got a cute little bottle brush gnome for the tree. So for another unique gnome, I am going to be using that leftover portion of sock from our previous project, a wood slice and some chunky yarn. I'm just cutting off the heel of our sock and I'm just going to be placing it over the top of the wood slice, as you can see here. And now I am going to be using this chunky yarn for my beard. As you can see, there's a string that is wrapping around it. And once I remove that, it creates this just really fun and fuzzy texture and it's perfect for a beard. I'm just tying the cluster of strands in the middle and then I'm just fraying them as you can see here to create that nice chunky beard. I'm just going to see that it fits underneath our hat. So you can leave your sock as is, but I've decided to trim off the top of it. I wanted to create that little clustered look at the top. And I also wanted to glue our hanger onto the inside of our hat. So again, I just created a loop, tied a knot and glued it into the top portion of our hat. Then taking another piece of string, I gathered the top of our hat and tied it off tight added a little dab of hot glue and that helps hold the top of our hat all together. I'm slipping the hat back onto our wood slice as you can see here and then I'm going to start to glue the hat into place onto the wood slice. So I didn't add any glue to the front of the hat and wood slice. I still needed to add our beard into place. Once you have the desired placement, add a generous amount of hot glue, press your beard into place, and then you can glue down your hat. Just make sure that you leave a spot for us to add the nose. So again, I am going to add some embellishments just to decorate this little guy. You can add anything you'd like. I like to use these wood embellishments and some bells, but you could add some little ornaments or flowers or a bow, whatever you'd like, and then he'll be ready to hang on the tree. For our next 
little a gnome ornament, you're going to need a piece of felt in the desired color you like. I am kind of going for some neutral colors as that's what I am going for on my tree this particular year. I'm going to cut out a circle and then I am cutting that circle in half and then creating a cone and that is going to be our hat but I needed to make sure it was gonna fit over this bell. The bell is going to be the base for this particular gnome. Again, I need to create my hanger first. So I did the same thing, tied a knot, had a loop there and then glued it into the hat. Again, I'm gonna create that foam or <laughs> cone shape and then I am going to glue that along the edge, as you can see right here. I'm really liking this faux fur material. It is working really well for my gnomes. I picked it up from a store called Dollarama. So I'm just measuring a piece to make sure it's going to fit. And as you can see here, I've got the right size. I just tucked it underneath the rim of the bell. This particular bell had that. I don't know if all bells have that or not, but this one did. So I'm just going to place the beard into the hat and glue it into place and then start to glue the hat into place onto the bell. I'm just adding some hot glue in different spots to help hold the hat and the beard down into place. So this time I am using a pom-pom for the nose. I had these little white ones in my stash. I added a dab of glue and put the nose into place. And then again, I am just adding a little embellishment to the hat and this guy is ready for the tree. So I have been having a lot of fun making gnome ornaments. I have several in the playlist that I've got provided. And this one is another fun one. So I'm cutting a piece of felt into fours, as you can see here. And I have two pieces laid out together and I'm just kind of creating a body shape, as you can see here. And then I am taking some scissors and I'm going to cut through the two layers along the shape that I created. As you can see, it's kind of got an egg shape. <laughs> so now I needed another piece of felt in a contrasting color. Again, use any color you desire. And I am going to be cutting this particular one into eight. So I fold my quarter piece into half, as you can see here, so it's cut down to two eighths. And I'm cutting this into a triangle shape, and this is going to create the hat for our gnome, as you can see here. I'm just trimming down the body a little bit. I thought it was a little bit too big for the hat, and it was a little cumbersome to uh, it was quite big and I thought it looked too big hanging on the tree. So now once I have all my pieces together, again I am using this string to create my hanger and I want to do this first so I can hide my knot on the inside of the hat, just like I did for all the other gnomes previously shown. Now I am going to start to assemble our foam or felt pieces together. I'm gonna start off gluing the edges of our hat together, as you can see here. I didn't glue right down the edges of the hat as I wanted to place the body in there first. So I started to glue the two pieces of our gnome's body together and I left one little opening so I can place some fiber fill on the inside of both our hat and the body. Oh, 
Once you've got the body filled up, you can then close it off with some more hot glue. So I'm going to be using this faux fur again because I really, really like this. I also have a gnome playlist and I share different ways that you can create some beards. So if you want to check that out, again, I will have a link for you down below. Now I am going to start to glue all our pieces together. So we have our beard, our hat, our body, and I'm going to as you can see, start to glue the back side of the hat onto the body. Now, you don't have to make this gnome exactly as I am sharing it. There might be an easier way. <laughs> um, if, you, if you find an easier way, that's awesome, but I'm just doing what works for me. I'm adding a little bit of extra fiber fill just at the hat there. I found that it was just a little bit too flat, and then I glue my beard into place and glue the sides of our hat and everything together as you can see here. I'm going to add a little white pom-pom for the nose again and you could again add any color you'd like. I have even seen people make them out of pantyhose by adding a little bit of fiber fill. And as always, I like to decorate the hat, so I'm adding the snowflake embellishment, and again, it's ready to hang on the tree. So you are going to want to grab yourself some red trucks. I found these ones at a liquidation center and they are really cool they've got that vintage vibe you are also going to need some bottle brush brush trees and some branches so i removed the bases off of the bottle brush trees and i like to create a little piece of branch to the base of them to create a realistic look it looks like a tree trunk I love that look. I love using nature in my projects whenever I can, and I thought this was so fitting. So as you can see, I had glued the bottle brush tree to the back of one of our trucks, but for something different and unique, I am going to be measuring the back side of this particular truck, and I'm going to cut some branches down and fill it up to make it look like logs are being carried in the back of this vintage red truck. So you can add as many as you'd like. You could probably fill the back of this truck with some miniature presents, anything you'd like, a little snowman, a little Santa in the back there would be really cute as well. Once you have your branches all cut down, you can add some glue to the back of the truck. Working quickly, add your branches into the glue. So now, this is the tr uh, bottle brush tree. I had glued it to the top of the truck, as you can see there, but I didn't anchor it to the back of the truck. So I just added a daub of hot glue and then pressed the tree trunk into the glue. Now to create the hanger, I'm using some red and white baker's twine, as you can see here. And I am going to wrap it at the middle point of our truck. Now you want to make sure that when you tie a string on that it's going to hang properly. One end of the truck will probably be heavier than the other. So take that into consideration when you're adding your string just so that it's not hanging lopsided once it's on the tree. The weight of mine are pretty even since I placed something in the back of the, our trucks. So I just wrapped the baker twine in around the middle of our truck, tied a knot tight, and then formed a loop and tied another knot at the top. 
And that's it. This is so easy and such a cute ornament. I know that my father-in-law, my husband, and my son absolutely love it. First DIY, you are going to need some vintage lace. I picked mine up from the thrift store. You will need three assorted sizes and feel free to use any colors you'd like. I chose white for my project. You're going to also need a needle and some thread that matches the color of the lace you're using. To start off, I am going to tie off the string onto my lace. I tied a knot and I had trimmed off the excess and now I'm going to be doing a running stitch along the edge of the lace. And as you go along, you will be pulling the thread tight as we are creating a ruffle. So you're going to want to continue to do your stitch and pull and you will continue to do this until you come all the way back around and form a circle. Trim off the excess lace and then you can finish some stitching as needed and then also stitch your circle closed. Don't forget to tie a knot so this doesn't unravel. Once your string is knotted off, you can trim off the excess and then you're going to want to create two other sizes. So I also have these pieces of cardstock that are in white that are the same size as my lace circles. And I'm going to be gluing those using some hot glue on top of each other. And in case you haven't guessed, yes, we are creating a snowman. So now I am going to figure out my placement for my lace circles and then using some hot glue, I'll be adhering those to the cardstock pieces that we had cut out. I used my die cutting machine to cut out these circles, but you could also trace around a circle and hand cut them. Once you have all your lace circles put into place, you can now start to decorate. So here I am going to be using some flat back pearls and I've got them in cream and a charcoal color, but I end up changing this out. So I am going to be showing that to you a little bit later, but I just wanted to first show you the process. So I'm using three of the larger pearls as buttons and then I'm going to be using two of the dark char charcoal as the eyes. And I'm just using hot glue to adhere these pieces. So I really like the simplicity of the pearls, but feel free to dive into your sash of supplies, use buttons or flowers, use whatever you have. So now I am going to be creating a nose by cutting out a little tiny tri triangle out of some felt. Again, just dive into your stash to see what you have in your supplies. Next, I'm going to be using this pretty white lace trim that I picked up from a store called Dollarama and I'm just going to be making a simple little bow. You could use any other trim that you have on hand. This again is up to you on what you have in your stash. So now I made this cute little bow and I'm going to use some hot glue and I'm going to pin it just at the neck. You could create a scarf instead, but I thought to stick with that kind of pretty vintage shabby chic look, I thought a bow would work. And you could do this in a different color as well. And using the same lace, I am going to be creating a loop and attach that to the backside of the snowman's head to create my hanger, just as shown.
Okay, so I wasn't satisfied with the color of the pearls that I used, so I switched it out for these pretty peachy colored pearls. I removed the other pearls off, I was able to cut them off, and now at adding those really pretty peachy colored pearls, and also a peachy colored nose and I am just loving the way this looks so much better. It definitely has more of a shabby chic look. Okay, I think this snowman is adorable. I would love to know what you think of this little guy. I have not seen anything like it. I just think he is going to be perfect on a vintage shabby chic Christmas tree. Okay, so for our next DIY, you are going to want to dive into that stash of ribbons and lace trim along with some pretty yarns and we are going to be cutting some lengths of it. As you can see, I'm folding it over my hand as I am going to be creating a beautiful shabby chic tassel. So I'm just going through all my lace and trims. I've got a beautiful selection with creams and this pretty peachy kind of dusty rose color along with a little bit of a vintage white and as you can see I've got them all laid out. So I'm just going to kind of mix up all my colors and textures as you can see here by laying them out flat. If any of the pieces have got some unraveling, um, I just went and tied a knot at the end and then I just continued to lay all my pieces out. Some of my ribbons had a pretty pattern on the front so I made sure that was facing down. Then using a piece of string, I placed that in the middle fold all my lace and trims over as you can see here and before I tie my bundle together I'm just making a few adjustments to make sure I have the look I want. I am also pulling some of my strands out and layering them a little bit differently just so that the different textures are showing the way I like. Once you have the look that you like, you can then you tie your string off by using a knot. That way here, it'll prevent your pieces from falling apart. Before moving on to the next step, I have dug into my stash and I got out this pretty wood pot and I'm going to be giving it a coat of this champagne gold shimmery paint and I'm going to be giving it two to three coats. This is one of my favorite paints that I use at Christmas. I love it. It's put out by Deco Art. I will have the link to it down below for you. I think it's just such a gorgeous, pretty vintage gold shimmer. So once your pot is dry, you are going to then just trim off the excess string on the top there. And then using another piece of string, I'm just going to tie it around the top of our trim gather as shown here. And that will just help keep them clustered together for our next step. So now I'm going to be using my hot glue and I'm placing a generous amount on the inside of the pot, then placing our trim cluster inside. I'm just using my scissors just to kind of poke it in to make sure it all stays in place. And then I am going to cut through that string that we use to put our cluster together. We don't need that part anymore. That will allow our tassel to flow freely now I'm just going to trim off the ends as some of them were a little bit too long for my liking. This part is optional. You can make all your trims as long or as short as desired. Now to create our hanger. Again, I'm using this beautiful lace trim, forming a loop, tying a knot, trimming off the excess, then using a good amount of glue on the top or bottom of our pot and then placing that knot into the glue. Allow that to set. Once set, you can then start to decorate. I went into my stash and I found some faux greenery along with some 
paper flowers and I'm just going to trim everything down to size. This particular greenery is from a pick and it has a really pretty vintage gold color on the tips. I'm just using some hot glue to apply it to uh, where our knot is from our hanger and I'm just going to decorate that part to give it a really pretty shabby chic vintage look. So I'm just going to continue to layer my pieces around that knot to camouflage it. I had these paper flowers that I picked up from a store called Dollarama here in Canada, but I have seen stuff similar in Dollar Tree and also at Michael's or other craft stores. You could use some faux silk flowers as well. Again, I just encourage you to go into your stash to see what you have. So I'm just going to continue to add my flowers and then I am going to add this beautiful sparkly evergreen. I love this stuff. I believe I picked it up from Dollar Tree last year. I'm not 100% sure. I can't. <laughs> it's from my stash so I can't remember where I got everything but I just really love the look of it. It just adds such a pretty sparkle. Another lovely added touch would be buttons and faux pearls. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I am so excited to make some more of these. I think it's going to be so beautiful on a very vintage, shabby chic, romantic Christmas tree. So now I dove into my stash of vintage doilies and I found this nice shape and pattern and I'm also going to be using some cotton fabric in white that matches my doily and I'm cutting out just a rough circle and this is what we'll be using for our next DIY. So I'm just going to layer the pieces and then I'm going to just continue to cut the fabric down until it's roughly the same size as the doily. So if you are at all interested, I do have a playlist of all my Christmas in July videos for you all. I've got that link down below in my description box. Next, you are going to need needle and some sturdy thread. And again, I'm going to be doing a running stitch along the edge of my cotton fabric. So you'll want to pull gently enough just to bring your thread through, but I'm not going to pull it completely tight once I get around to the start. I want enough room so I can add some fiber fill. I have done a pumpkin in this version as well. I'll link that below for you as well in case you want to check it out. So once you've added the fiber fill, you can pull your string tight and then tie it off with a knot. So now you can place your puff down in the middle of your doily. And now I'm going to again use that beautiful lace trim that I picked up from Dollarama. I'm creating a loop and tying a knot. I'm going to use this as my hanger. So I'm going to generously apply some glue in the middle of our fabric puff and put the knot in the middle as shown. Allow that to set and then place it back in the middle of your doily. Again, you're going to need a needle and a thread. And then you are going to want to start doing a running stitch along the edge of your doily. Here I am just going to knot it off as I don't want my string to come loose. And then I'll start to do my running stitch along the edge of the doily. I love using vintage doilies in my crafts. I have a lot for my grandma, but you can find these at the thrift stores as well. So check out those stores. So once you come to the end, you're going to place your puff back in the middle and then pull the strings tight so the doily gathers around your fabric puff.
All right, so now we can start to decorate. I decided that I wanted some loopy bows at the top of our doily. I'm just going to add several loops to the bow and add a few different tails. And then I'm just going to use a wire to tie it off in the middle. I'm going to create two bows and I'm gluing them to the top portion of our doily. Once you have your pretty bows in place, you can then dive into your stash and dig out those flowers again along with your faux greenery and trim them down and put them into place in around the bow. This has got such a beautiful and romantic look. I am really loving this so far. So I'm just gonna continue to layer my flowers. Some of these flowers actually have a touch of a vintage gold on the tips of them which I thought was a really pretty touch. Here I'm just using that glittered faux greenery again. Again it's just such a pretty faux greenery. I really like it and I'm pretty sure I got it from Dollar Tree or it might have been Michael's. I can't remember 100%. Here is our beautiful vintage doily that's got a gorgeous shabby chic look. Oh seriously I am so in love with this. So Dollar Tree carried these mini lanterns a couple of years ago and I was inspired by a couple of other crafters and learned from them that you could take these little lanterns apart and customize them. You just need a thin tool to pry them apart and remove any of the hot glue. Again, I have the original video for all of you in my ornament playlist and the links to both of those channels that inspired me are listed in that video description. So here you can see there's little pieces of hot glue and I needed to remove those. Then things will fit together better when we're done. I just take all the pieces apart and set them aside. I had this rusting kit put out by Rust-Oleum several years ago and I wanted to try it out. So I gave one of the lanterns a base coat of this rusty orange spray paint and then using this faux rust finish, I apply it just here and there onto our lantern and then dab it off using a paper towel. Make sure you are doing this on a protected work surface because it does get messy. So here you can see that I'm kind of creating a bit of a rusty patina as you can see here. You can use any type of spray paint you'd like. You could probably just use some traditional spray paint and then go over it with either some stain or craft paint to get the same desired look. You would probably just need to water down the craft paint a little bit just so it has that kind of more of a wash look. So now you can see here I am assembling all the pieces back together because I wanted to make sure it all fits. And you can just hang this ornament on the tree as is or you could do like what I'm going to show you and decorate it. So I can get these little wooden embellishments from a store called Dollarama and I like to color them up using an ink pad. I find that it makes it just really fast, quick, easy. I'm using white for the base of this little mushroom and then I'm going to be using red for the top. I will try to have some links in my Amazon favorites for you all for little wood embellishments. I know you can get them on Amazon. Uh, Dollar Tree is starting to carry them as well, so you'll just have to keep your eyes open for those. So I had taken that rusted ornament apart and 
As you can see, the clear plastic portion has a base to it. I'm gonna fill that base with some faux snow. This is called sugar dust. I'm gonna put a little mini wreath in there and then add some more little sugar dust on top to create that faux snow look. Here you can see there's a little knob in the center of our lantern and I added some hot glue and then placed the mushroom in the middle of that hot glue, added a little bit of more faux snow just to camouflage that glue, put the lid back into place and then reassemble our lantern. If you find that your pieces aren't fitting together properly, by all means, go ahead and add a little bit of hot glue. Once it's all set, you can hang it on the tree as is. You could decorate it some more. I think this turned out so, so cute. So the little lanterns also came in the color black, but I wanted to create a matte black look, so I spray painted it. And during Halloween, they also have some black tea lights. So I grabbed one of those as well, and I spray painted that with the matte black as well. I took that little piece off there on the center bit. I just clipped it off with some wire cutters. I wanted to create a flat surface there as that is where I am going to be placing the battery operated tea light. So I'm just putting the base back together as you can see here. I'm not using the base portion of our clear pieces. Those clear pieces represent the glass of a lantern. So I removed the little tab from the bottom of our battery operated light, placed the ring portion around our battery operated light, and also put that gla faux glass globe over the top. The ring was slipping down, so I added just a few dabs of hot glue and then put that into place, and that held the ring exactly where I needed it. So. Now it's time to put our little lantern pieces back together. You can see that there's like a little knob on the top of the faux glass. I slipped that into place as you can see there, snapped all the pieces together, added the wire, and then you can just hang it on the tree as is or on a side table. You can access the little switch by pushing it in and then to turn it off, I just pushed it back on itself and it turned it off no problem. I decided to add some little embellishment back onto the top portion of this lantern as you can see here. I just thought it looked so pretty and Christmassy. And then there you go. Again you can hang this on the tree or put it on a side table as a decorative element you'll need some heavy duty jute twine and I'm just unraveling some from the spool and then cut off a strand. Then you will take the long strand and wrap it around your fingers. I went about 20 to 30 times and then you'll want to snip that off. Using that strand that you had cut you'll want to place it through all your loops and then tie it off with a knot. So once you have your lo loops all tied together, you will need another strand and you're going to be wrapping that around all the strands near the top as we are going to be forming a tassel. So I like to take my twine and wrap it around a couple times and then I'm going to be tying it off with a knot. You could use 
colored twine if you'd like. You could also do this with string, but I really wanted to try and create a really rustic farmhouse look. So this neutral twine worked great. So now I am going to be pulling out more twine and this time I'm creating a loopy bow and I am creating five loops on each side. So I have another strand of my jute twine and I'm tying it off with a knot in the middle of our bow, but I end up changing that out and I will show you what I do a little bit later on. I'm just trimming off the excess ends as I don't need those. So I was gonna leave the loops intact, but then I decided to cut through them. So here I am just using my scissors to cut through all the loops and then I'm going to just kind of fluff that up as shown here. And now you have a tassel but I am going to do something really cool with this tassel. So I'm gonna need three strands of just regular jute twine and I also am going to be using a wire. Tie your strands off with a knot and then weave the wire into the knot. As you can see here, I also have a clipboard. I'm going to take that knot and clip it down and now I'm going to start to braid our pieces together. As you can see, I am adding the wire in along with one of those strands as I am braiding. Once you have the desired length, you can then just pull the wire off to the side and then knot all your strands together again. This will prevent your braid from an unraveling. So now I want to attach this braid to the top part of our tassel. So I'm just going to bend the knot up and then using some hot glue, I'm going to put that into place and I'll be wrapping that braid around that top portion of our tassel. But I needed to cut that knot off and then using just a bit of hot glue, it'll prevent it from unraveling on the end. So now I'll just wrap the braid around the top, add a little bit of hot glue along the way, and then finish by gluing down the other end of our braid on the back side. Again, trim the knot off and use some hot glue to stop it from unraveling. So here you can see that a little bit of the hot glue is showing so I'm just getting a little scrap of my twine and just add a dollop of hot glue at the back there and I'm going to use that piece to cover it up and then you can't even tell that there is some hot glue underneath. Just cleans it up really well. So now I want to add my loopy bow to the back side covering up that knot. As you can see we're making a sweet little angel but I found that this twine in the middle of our bow was too bulky, so I decided to use some wire and I just used it as you would a twist tie. So I'm gonna just trim off the excess and again, use some hot glue to add your loopy bow to the back side to cover up the knot that you'll see here in a minute. There you go, and I'm just covering that up and then you have a sweet little angel. But again, I wanted to cover that wire. I didn't really want the wire to be showing, so I'm just using a little piece of twine again to cover it up. And again, that works really, really well. So now you can just fluff up your bow, add a knot to the top of the twine, and then it's ready to hang on the tree. I love the look of this rustic twine angel. I think it'll look so pretty hanging on the tree at Christmas time. So for the next DIY, I'm actually gonna be using some yarn for the first part. So I'm using this pretty cream colored yarn and I am going to use one strand along with some loops that I'm going to be wrapping around 
two of my fingers. I will be wrapping it around about 40 times. The more wraps you have, the thicker it will be. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to be using that extra strand I had and I am going to, as you can see, press it through my fingers and pull it up through the other side. And I am going to be tying it off in a knot really tight around all of our loops in the middle as shown. You wanna make sure you pull that quite tight. And then I'm going to be taking my scissors and I am going to cut through all the loops. So yes, I am going to be creating a pom-pom. So you could use some other colored twine. I just wanted to keep mine nice and neutral. And then once you've got the loops cut through, you can give your pom-pom a haircut. So I'm just going to create just a round shape. You could leave it oblong for this particular project, uh, but I just wanted to round it off. I just wanted it to be symmetrical. So now I have this paper tube left over from some paper towel and I'm just, just cutting off a ring that's approximately a centimeter wide and I'm just going to trim it off so it's even. Then using that clipboard, I am going to wrap some thinner twine around it. Now I am going around it approximately 20 times and then I'm going to be pulling all those strands off. Once you have your strands pulled off, you can then cut through just one side of them and leave that nice full length. Now, this is where we're gonna be using all those strands. I am going to take one strand and then fold it in half and then put the loop through the middle of our paper tube ring and then pull the strands up through the front and pull them through the loop and then pull tight. And we're going to continue to do that until we have our loop of cardboard all covered. So again, you're gonna put your loop up through the middle of the ring, pull the strands through the loop and then pull tight. Once the cardboard ring is all covered, you can now take all those strands and push them back through the other side by pushing them through the middle of that ring. What we're doing here is creating a hat for our little pom-pom. And you could use some regular yarn or string for this, but of course, since this is a twine challenge, I wanted to try this out with the twine. So now I'm gonna be using a pom-pom so I can fluff up our hat. I just shove that in the middle. You could use some fiber fill as well. And then I have an extra strand sitting to the side there, and I'm going to be tying that around all of our strands to create our hat topper. I'm just arranging my strings so you can't see that white pom-pom showing through. So here I've got my string and I'm just going to tie that around and tie it in a knot. So again, just rearrange those strings so you cover up your pom-pom if it's showing. And now you can take your scissors and just trim off the strands at the top. And this will just create that, you know, the little fluff or pom-pom part of your hat and you can just shape it till you have the desired look. Here, I'm just kind of trimming off a few of those strands. I've seen some people take um, some flame and burn them off, but I kind of like the rustic look here, so. So now I am just taking a piece of twine and I'm gonna create a, t a hanger by tying a knot and then gluing it into the middle of our little hat topper. So now I'm just kind of pressing firmly the twine on the side there of our hat, adding some hot glue and then putting it onto our pom-pom. So as you can see, we are creating a little gnome, so we need a nose and I like to use wood beads. 
So I'm just going to decide on the color and then add some hot glue and place our wood bead into place just underneath the rim of our hat. So the whole of the bead is showing on the other side. So I'm just adding some glue and then I'm putting the yarn to cover up that hole into place. And here is our little pom-pom gnome all ready to be hung on the tree. next twine ornament I'm going to be using a piece of cardboard and I'm just roughly using some scissors and cutting out a tree shape now you could trace your tree shape out if you prefer but I'm just freehanding it I'm just going for a basic shape You can trim it down as needed until you have your desired shape and size. So using the heavy duty jute twine again, I am going to use some hot glue onto the cardboard and start to wrap it around this piece. Now this ornament was inspired by some projects that I had seen on Pinterest and I knew that this would be really easy to recreate. So again, you could do this using some string or yarn or I have seen jute tw twine in so many different colors so uh, definitely check out your craft stores to see what there is so I'm just adding a little dab of hot glue here and there and then I'm going to continue to wrap the twine around until our cardboard tree is fully covered So once you get to the tip of your tree, you're just going to add some hot glue and then just finish wrapping your twine around and then you can trim it off. So at this point you could leave your tree as is and use it for some different projects but I want to turn mine into an ornament so I'm just taking some jute twine again creating a knot and gluing our loop onto the back side of our tree at the top. So for a fun added little touch, I'm going to be using some wood embellishments that I had in my stash. I've got cute little berries and this pretty star. You can embellish these any way you'd like. You could also paint these particular wood pieces. So I'm just using hot glue and I'm going to place the star on the top. And then I'm going to figure out the arrangement for my berries as seen here and then I'll glue these into place. I have seen people use buttons and sequins. You can use ribbon as well. Anything to decorate these cute little twine trees. This little tree has a great farmhouse country look to it. It's perfect for a farmhouse country Christmas. So this next ornament is really fun and whimsical. You are going to need some air dry clay. I picked up these packages from the kids section at my local dollar store. I needed a red and a white. I am also going to use one of these little wooden dowel pieces. They're just miniature. They're about an inch, inch and a half. And you could use a branch instead if that's all you have. So I am going to be making a air dry clay mushroom. So I wanted to create the stem first. So I took some of the white and I build it up around the wood dowel piece. That will give it a little bit more weight. 
I'm just smoothing out the edges as you can see here. Then I'm setting those aside for now. I am going to be taking some red and I'm going to create the mushroom caps. So I kind of made a roundish shape and I'm just molding it into a mushroom cap kind of shape as you can see here. And then I'm just taking my fingers and I'm smoothing it out. Once you have your pieces all formed, you can set them aside and allow them to dry for about 24 hours. So here are our pieces all dry. Got the stem and the mushroom cap, but they didn't quite have the right colors to them. So I'm using my craft paint and I am painting the underside of the mushroom cap with white craft paint. As you can see here, it'll take about two to three coats. I'm creating a toadstool kind of look. So it needed to be painted on the other side. And just for some consistency, I added the craft paint to the white stem as well. So I allowed the white to dry and once dry, you can then paint the top of the toadstool. Again, you'll need about two to three coats. I am using what's called Tuscan Red. It's a really, really beautiful kind of Christmassy red color. So here I am painting the top portion and I'm cleaning up the edges a bit where the white was meeting and allow it to dry in between coats. You can see here it's all nice and dry and I wanted to start to attach the pieces. So I'm using some hot glue. I'm generously applying it to the underside of the mushroom cap and then placing the top of our stem holding in place till set. Now to add the dots to the top of our mushroom cap to give it that toadstool look. I'm using the bottom of a pencil eraser and I'm dipping it into white paint and I'm adding the dots all over. If you want some varied sizes, then you can just take a paintbrush and just freehand the dots as you can see here and then allow this to dry. So this ultra fine glitter paint is one of my favorites. Deco Art carries it. I have got it linked in my Amazon favorites. If you're at all interested, I have that link down below. And I am going to give my mushroom a coat of this glimmer paint and that will give it a really beautiful, kind of whimsical fairy-like look. And the light will bounce off of it and just look so, so beautiful. I seriously love this glitter paint. So you can add as many layers of the glitter paint as you'd like and allow it to dry. Once dry, then you're going to need to add an eye pin. I picked these up from my local dollar store. You can get them at the craft stores as well. Using a poking tool, I poked a hole into the top of our mushroom cap and I did need to trim this eye pin down a bit. I'm not sure if they come in a smaller size or not, but I trimmed it down and then using some hot glue, I glued it into place once I have the desired length. So I wanted to add some more shine to our mushroom as well as protect the surface of our mushroom. So I am coating the entire piece with some gloss decoupage glue. You can use any brand you like. I just use um, this brand that I picked up from Michaels. So give it a coat and then allow it to dry. I'm gonna be threading a needle with some baker's twine. You don't have to do this, but I just found it easier for me to put the string through my eye hook, as you can see here. And then I am going to create a loop, tie a knot, and there you have a hanger. This seriously is such a cute ornament 
for a woodland whimsical Christmas tree. I'm starting off with this mini mason jar and some woodland figurines. I picked them both up from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of this little deer and I'm gonna make sure the writing on the jar is at the back side. Place the deer inside along with these little trees that I had in my stash, again from Dollar Tree that I picked up last Christmas. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of faux moss and faux snow. I'll be using a pencil just to push the snow and moss around. Once you have embellished the inside, you'll put the lid back on. And then I am going to be adding some red twine from my stash. I'll be using a little bit of hot glue to adhere the twine to the lid and tie it off. And then I'll have a place to hang this little jar on a tree. I want to say a big thank you to all my regular subscribers for being here and if you are new welcome I'd love for you to become a part of my community by tapping on the subscribe button and if you tap that bell it'll keep you up to date with everything I have to share I'm just adding a little dollop of the hot glue on both sides of the twine and then I will be adding bows on both sides to cover up my little bits of glue. And that's it for our first ornament. For our next project, I will be using the packaging left from my garden gnomes and a magnetic tin. I'm going to use the image on the inside of the tin and I'll be tracing that out using a pencil and then I'll cut it out to size to fit on the inside of the tin. Don't worry if it doesn't fit exact. I'll be adding some hot glue and then placing the image on the back of the tin. Now I am going to add of some of the preserved reindeer moss and I am going to cover up the inside edge around the image. Now I'm selecting a cute little gnome figurine and a tree and I will apply some glue generously to the bottoms and apply both pieces to the inside of the tin. Now I am going to add a little bit of the faux moss and snow inside the tin. This next bit is optional. I had this cute little faux mushroom in my stash and I am going to glue that into place. The lid is a little loose, so I decided to add some hot glue to the rim of the tin and then close the 
lid on and then you can see inside. This next part is optional as well. I have this faux garland in my stash and I am going to shape it so it will fit the top rim of the lid. And I'll hot glue that into place as well. I'm just adding a little bow to where the two ends meet. And now with that same red twine, I am going to be wrapping it around the tin with a little bit of hot glue, tie it off, and then you've got a nice place to hang your ornament on the tree. I love how these little ornaments turned out. They're really fun and whimsical and woodland theme. And you can find these products for the most part this time of year or from the spring. And you can dive into your stash and just use whatever you have. I have these cute little boxes and they held tea and I'm just going to glue the flaps down. I really like the shape of these little boxes. I thought they made the perfect little Christmas trees. So now I'm going to be taking a branch and I'm just going to trim it off to make sure that the tip is flat. And then using some hot glue, I am going to apply the branch to the bottom side of the little tea box. I glue and then allow to set. Once the stem has set, you can now take a piece of jute string and glue it to the top, forming a loop so you have a place to hang. So I'm just going to trim it off and add a dab of glue on two sides of the box, apply the string on each side, and there you've got a little hanger. So now I have this really pretty fabric. I had coffee stained it. It reminded me of the primitive style that you see out there. I love the country look of the primitive uh, decor. So I'm going to be using this fabric and wrapping it around the box. I'm going to just use some hot glue and you can see I'm placing it on an angle. So add some hot glue press the fabric into place, and then I'm going to just measure around and cut off the excess. Just make sure you don't cut off too much as you do want some hanging down below. I'm really loving the rustic primitive look for Christmas this year. It just feels so warm and cozy and traditional. And this fabric and these little ornaments are going to be perfect for that look. So just add some hot glue to each side, pull the fabric tight, and then apply the fabric into the glue. So I'm just going to gather the excess fabric underneath at the base of the tree. Again, trim off just a little bit and then I'm just fraying the edge. Now I'm gonna cut a length of jute string again and I am going to gather the fabric 
around the base of the tree and then wrap that jute twine around the base. You can tie it off in a bow if you like. I chose just to tie it off in a knot. Trim off the ends and there you have a cute little tree. So you can leave this as is or use a different fabric, but I am going to add these cute little berries that I got from Dollar Tree. If you see in primitive decor, they use these type of berries a lot. And I thought it would be a really pretty touch of color for these cute little Christmas ornament trees. So I'm just going to wrap the wire around and then just add little dabs of hot glue here and there. I really love how these little box trees turned out. I think they're so cute. I did one here with gold berries as well. It is a really great way to reuse some packaging. So for this next project, I am going to be using the Deco Art chalk paint in Whisper, and I have got this cloche. Now I picked up this cloche from my local dollar store. If I can find some mini ones, I will definitely have those linked for you in my Amazon favorites. So I gave the base a coat of the chalk paint, and now I am going to be using these really pretty bottle brush trees. I got them from all sorts of different places. Uh, there was Dollar Tree, my local dollar store, as well as Michael's. You can figure out your placement and then make sure that the cloche top will fit over top and then you can glue them into place onto the base. So I'm just going to hold those till set and continue to add some hot glue if needed. Next, I am going to be adding some faux snow to cover the base along with a little bit of moss. So I'm just adding some glue to the base and then pressing the moss into place. And then I will be doing the same for the faux snow. Once you've added the desired amount, I will just go in and trim off any of the little strays of moss and then make sure our cloche can fit. You can see there, the moss will prevent it from fitting in the slot if you don't do that step. And then add some hot glue, put your cloche topper back on. And then I wanted to add just a little bit of a dec decorative element just to hide that seam that you can see there at the base. I have this iridescent pipe cleaner or chenille stem and I just wrapped it around and then added some hot glue to keep it in place. So to create our little hanger, you're gonna need some string and a pretty little bead. First, I am going to create a loop and then tie a knot. You do wanna make your knot fairly large because you are going to be threading the bead onto this string and you want that knot to kind of lock on the inside. As you can see here, I'm gonna add a dollop of hot glue to the top of our cloche and then glue that bead into place and that will create your hanger. So I have got another base all prepped and ready to go and I decided to use this cute, fun and whimsical gnome and it fits just right underneath our cloche. So that was awesome. 
I know Dollar Tree carries some little tiny miniatures, so keep that in mind. Now I'm just going in and adding some faux snow with some hot glue into the base around the gnome. Again, make sure the cloche will fit and that the snow isn't preventing it from going into the slotted portion, as you can see there. Add some hot glue. Again, add your lid back into place so that'll hold it all in. And to cover up the seam on the base of this particular one, I am adding again some faux snow and hot glue and then you don't see that seam between the base and the, the cloche lid. And then you'll be adding your hanger in the same way as you did on the previous one. So for another little option, I found these cute little deer and I got this one from Michael's and I'm adding a little bottle brush tree. You can see I already painted the base. I'm gonna glue my pieces into place as you can see here. And again, I'm going to be adding some moss and some faux snow in the same way as I did before. Follow all the same steps as you did for the previous two cloche ornaments. So to cover the base of this particular one, I found this wired greenery at a store called Daiso. Again, just using some hot glue to put it into place. You could use some faux garland as well. Just anything you can find to cover up that seam. Add your bead with the hanger and then it's ready to be hung on the tree. These little cloche ornaments turned out so cute and I love them on the Christmas tree. They are so fun and whimsical. In DIY, I have these really pretty plastic snowflakes from Dollar Tree and I am going to just snip off the little strings that are on the top. I am going to be giving these snowflakes two to three coats of this espresso brown craft paint. I'm going to be applying the paint with a sponge brush. I really like the color of this paint. It gives a really nice rusty color and I am really loving the primitive Christmas look this year. I like the rustic farmhouse country look for Christmas and I think this will be perfect. So I end up actually painting two of each size of these snowflakes as you see here you can still see a tiny bit of the glitter showing through but i'm okay with that so i'm gluing two of the snowflakes together as you can see here using some hot glue i would actually probably go back and use some aileen's tacky glue instead as you would have a lot more room for movement for any mistakes that you might make lining them up but I am impatient and I just end up using my hot glue gun. I do the same for both sizes of the snowflakes. So now it's time to decorate our little snowflakes. I have this really pretty pick my stash along with these pip berries from Dollar Tree and some jute twine. I'm just going to cut down this pick and then I'm going to glue the embellishments using hot glue to the middle of the snowflakes. I'm adding a little jute bow to the middle of this first snowflake. I again really like the rustic country charm of this. I think it really adds a nice little touch. So continue to add any of embellishments that you'd like. I have seen these done using some buttons or just some stars or some pretty little embellishments, just whatever you have in your stash. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna decorate the large one in the same way. I'm just gonna make it a little bit more full. I'm adding a double bow to this one and that's by just cutting two strands of the string and tying them together. I just really like the full look of this. I think these snowflakes are so beautiful. I again love the country rustic charm and I think these would look great either in a garland or just setting up on decor but I am actually going to be using these ones as Christmas ornaments. So I just cut two pieces of jute twine and created a loop and I will just glue those onto the back of the snowflakes. I think these snowflakes turned out absolutely beautiful. They even would look really beautiful on top of a gift. I would absolutely love to know what you think of all these creations. Let me know down in the comments. So if you love decoupage, then you're definitely going to want to try out this particular project. I found this beautiful Dollar Tree tissue paper and I cut out the little flower clusters and I tried to cut away as much of the white portion as I could as you can see here and I cut a stack of those little pieces so I am going to be using these Dollar Tree ornaments in this pearl finish and I'm going to be removing the tops of these ornaments and I'm placing a paintbrush and I'm using the paintbrush as my holder. So I usually like to use matte decoupage glue and I'll start off by generously applying the glue to the surface of our ornament as you can see here. And then I am going to select one of our little flower tissue paper pieces and press that into place it's okay if there's a few wrinkles it's not a problem you're going to go in and apply some decoupage glue over top and then i'm just going to smooth it out as best as i can you're going to want to continue to add some pieces of the tissue paper until you get the desired look that you're wanting on your ornament. It's okay if our pieces overlap and it's okay if some of the ornament color shows through. Here I am just cutting down a few of my pieces just so it fits a little bit better here on my ornament. And I just continue to add some glue and smooth it out with my finger. Once you have the desired coverage, you can then take that paintbrush and put it in the jar and allow it to dry. So our ornaments are all dry and you can see that some of the base is showing through as well. But I wanted to add a little bit more. So I am going to be adding some gold foil. So these are little flakes and I like to apply my foil by using some true foil adhesive. You can get this from the craft store. You apply a little bit of the adhesive and allow it to dry till it's tacky. Now you can get gold foil at Dollar Tree. I have seen it there, but you can get it at other craft stores as well. This particular foil I picked up at a store called Dollarama. I am just adding the foil adhesive just in a few spots around our ornament as I still want our tissue paper to show through. So I'm just setting it aside and allowing it to dry. Now I am going to take out some of our foil flakes. These are great for a project like this because they are small pieces, so it's just easier to handle. I'm just dumping some out onto a palette as you can see here. And then I'm going to pick some of those pieces up and place it onto all those tacky spots. So I have not tried this before, but some people have used some decoupage glue to add the foil. Like I said, I've never tried that before, so I don't know if it would work for this particular 
project or not. But as you can see, I'm just using a paintbrush, dabbing it into the foil pieces and push, pushing it into place onto those tacky spots that we have from the adhesive. So I did end up picking the pieces up and using my fingers, but just be forewarned, sometimes it does stick to the fingers a bit. Next, you're going to want to take a nice smooth rag and you're going to want to burnish the foil. What that does is smooths it all out and removes any of the excess foil and it creates this beautiful, romantic and glamorous ornament. I love these so much. Next, I'm going to be adding a little bit of a ribbon to the top of this ornament, as you can see here. I just added a little bit of hot glue. I wanted to camouflage the top of our ornament. I just thought it kind of took away from the rest of it. So now I am just going to tie that off. I found this pretty organza ribbon again in my store called Dollarama and I'm just creating a pretty little bow. Use any type of ribbon that you have in your stash. So I made these to place in a pretty little bow but you could tie off a piece of ribbon and add that to the top to create a little hanger and it's perfect for the Christmas tree. These definitely have a pretty romantic, shabby chic look. First DIY, you are going to need some yarn. I'm using red and black, and I'm also using a six inch wide board and some scissors. I'm taking the black and I'm wrapping it around my six inch board up to 40 times. The more wraps you do, the larger our finishing project will be. Snip the yarn and then pull it off of your six inch board. Once you've got the loops removed, you can then cut through all your loops and we've created one bundle of the black and you're going to need two bundles of the red. You'll also want some extra strands of yarn as we are going to be tying these pieces together. You're going to overlap your two bundles of red yarn and in a plus sign and then fold them in together, just like so. Then using one of your red strands of yarn, you are going to tie off one side of the bundle and you will do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you tie this off tight as you don't want your strands of yarn to come loose. So next you're going to need a piece of tissue and you're going to bundle this up. You could use a pom-pom instead if you desire. So now using our black yarn bundle, you're going to place that across our red and then place that tissue ball in the center. Pull your red strands over and cluster them to hide that piece of tissue. Using an extra piece of your yarn, you're going to wrap that around the red threads and then tie it off tight. Trim off the excess strands and then you're going to take the black strings and pull them in around the back end around your red strands. Now you're going to be using your black strand of thread and wrapping that around the back side and tying it off tight. So in case you haven't noticed, yes, we are creating a yarn bird. These are so much fun to make and they make really, really cute Christmas ornaments. So once you've got that all tied off, you'll then trim off all the excess at the back end of your bird and just create the look you like. Here I'm just fluffing up my yarn a bit just to create a better shape and here it is so far. Now it's time to decorate. 
I've got these black beads that I'm going to be using as the eyes and I'm just going to use a little dab of hot glue. I'll be doing the same for the other side of our bird. So now I'm going to be using a piece of felt that I had in my stash and I'm going to be folding it in half and then cutting a triangle shape. Now this is what I am going to be using as the beak. You could use a different color if you choose. I'm just again using some hot glue and placing that in the center of the face of our bird. So this next part is optional. I'm going to be using some 22 gauged wire and I'm going to create some feet. So I'm just bending the tips together and I'm going to create three little shapes. And then I will be twisting the two ends together to create the leg. So using some wire cutters, I'm clipping off the excess and here we've got our foot shape and our leg. And I'm just going to bend that and then I'll be cutting it down to size. So again, we're going to be using our hot glue gun and we're going to place the legs into the yarn on the bottom side of our bird. So again, this next part is optional. I am going to create a hanger for it by using some yarn, form a loop and then tie it off and then glue it to the top side of our bird. I added a bit too much glue, so I just added another little strand to cover up that glue bit and then you can hang it on the tree. Isn't this bird just the cutest? They look so good in the tree. I have made these as a set of three and gifted them. I love how traditional this little bird looks. So for our next project, I'm using this wood block that I picked up from a local craft store. You can get them at Dollar Tree as well. You'll need some Christmas scrapbook paper and I'm going to be using a die that's the same size as my wood block. So I cut some paper out using the die and then I'm going to be using some white craft paint and I'm going to paint out the edges of our block using some of the white paint and allow to dry. So today's video is a special one. I have teamed up with my daughter, Izzy at Izzy Bee Crafts, and we are both bringing you some videos full of Christmas DIYs. I'll have the link to her channel down in the description box below. Go show her some love and support. All right, so I'm gonna be using some tacky glue to apply the paper to the blocks. I'm not going right to the edge as the squares of paper aren't the exact size of our block. That's why I painted out the edges with the white paint. Here, I'm just spreading the glue out and now applying the paper and you can see the white border that's around it. I really like that look. I think it just frames it out nicely. So I'm gonna continue to add my glue and paper to the blocks. You can apply the glue straight onto the block or like I did here onto the paper and then just continue to cover the block with the papers. So one thing I kind of did was made sure that it was all balanced. So I had my patterns on opposite ends from each other. And then I'm going to create a hanger. So here I've just got some red trim again. I'll be creating a loop and then tying it off with a knot, trim off the ends, and then using some hot glue, I'm going to place it onto the top of our wood block. Once the glue has set, you can then start to decorate. So I'm going to be using some greenery that I had in my stash and I'm just going to glue them in around our hanger. Dive into your stash and see what you have. This is a great way to use up all those little scraps we have. Mm -hmm. 
Here is some greenery that I had picked up from Dollar Tree, I believe it was, or Michael's. And it's got some really pretty glitter on it. So it kind of has a bit of an icy look. I really like the way that looks and it gives some different texture. So now I'm going to add some bows. I'm just creating some simple two loop bows with some tails and I'm using some wire and I'm just going to tie it off like a twist tie. Cut off the excess wire and then just figure out your placement for your bows and use some hot glue to put them into place. So I ended up making a total of three bows. I really like how balanced that looks. You can see that here. I think it looks so, so pretty. And then you can decorate with whatever you want from here. I'm using these pip berries that I got from Dollar Tree. I thought they had a really pretty traditional look to them. And I'm just going to use some hot glue and put those into place. You could also add some flowers or bells or ornaments would be really pretty as well. Just dive into your stash and see what you have. Once you have the desired look, remove the glue strands and then it's ready to be hung on the tree. This is so, so pretty. I really, really like this one. It has a really beautiful traditional look. So I went into my stash again and I found this little red truck ornament I picked up from Dollar Tree. I removed the tree and the wire as I don't need those pieces. And then as you can see, I have these small circle stickers. I am going to place those over the tires because I am going to be giving this truck a fresh coat of holiday red paint. I wanted the glitter to be covered up and I really wanted a rich pop of red color. Once dry, you can remove those circle stickers and then I'm going to be using a paint marker and I'm going to fill in the tire. This gives it a really nice crisp clean look and don't forget to do the underside. You could use some craft paint and a paintbrush as well but I found it was really easy using the paint marker. Allow it to dry well and then you can fill it in with a white paint marker for the center portion of our tire. So I'm allowing the truck to dry and now I'm going to be using this embroidery hoop. It's got a plastic inner ring and this kind of rubbery outer ring that looks like faux wood. And I'm also going to be using this beautiful green felt that I had. You can use any fabric you have. Trim off the excess and then you are ready to start decorating. So I'm going to be using the inner portion of this hoop, but I wanted to cover up the seam. So I'm going to be using this faux garland. It's kind of like a pipe cleaner. And I'm going to attach that to the outer ring using some hot glue. If you can't find this, you could definitely use some decorative trim if you have that instead. So my garland didn't quite reach all the way to the top. So I'm just adding an added little touch to the top there. Allow that to dry and then you can start to decorate the inner portion. I have this bottle br brush tree. I picked it up from Michael's and I removed the base. I like to use real twigs in place of the little base that they provide on faux trees. I'm just cutting it down to size and then I'll be removing the metal part of this tree and using hot glue, I'll put it into place and then allow it to set. So I'm just going to figure out my placement for my tree and my truck, but I need to trim off the backside of this tree so it fits better within the hoop. 
And I decided that I am going to add just a little bit of riser so I can have the truck kind of sticking out more 3D. I'm using some little craft sticks for this by attaching two of them together and then gluing them to the back side of our truck as shown. So I like how my truck and my tree look together. So now I can start to glue them onto the in, inner part of our hoop. Again, using some hot glue. I'll be using this really pretty red ribbon trim again, and I'm just gonna create a simple little bow. I needed to hide some of the mechanics, and I also thought it just needed a little bit of extra touch on the upper portion of our hoop. So once I have the desired bow, I'm just figuring out my placement and using, again, our trusty hot glue gun, I'm going to put my bow into place. I'm using the same trim to create my hanger. So I thought for a fun little added touch, I would decorate by adding a little star to the top of our tree. I thought it would just look so cute. And then I'm also going to be using some faux snow underneath the truck, just so it doesn't look like it's just floating into thin air. So I added some hot glue and then I'm just pushing the faux snow into place. And then I'm also using a paint marker and adding some dots to the background to make it look like ball and snow, allow it all to dry, and then it's ready for your tree. Isn't this just such a cute ornament? I am really, really happy with how it turned out. I think it would make a wonderful gift as well as a gift topper. Definitely something I would hang on my tree. So for these ornaments, you want to dive into your stash of stamps. I've got a lot of different stamps and you're also going to want an acrylic block if you are using these clear stamps. So I am using some archival ink and I have selected a stamp that's going to fit onto these little wood slices as you can see here. Archival ink is a permanent ink. That's why I really like to use that particular ink. So now I am going to be creating a scene on this particular little wood slice. And to do that, you want to turn your stamps upside down, put them into place on your wood slice, and then press your acrylic block down onto those stamps. That way here, you'll get the exact placement that you need to go onto your wood slice. So I wanted to try my hand at doing a large one and I had this beautiful poinsettia and it turned out so beautiful. So now I'm just going to add a simple hanger by using some string. Again, you'd want to tie a knot and then glue this to the back side of our wood slices. Another option would be to use um, an eye hook that's got like the little screw and you can screw that into place as well. But I just chose to keep mine simple and glue some string on the back side. So for another wood slice ornament, I am going to be again using this beautiful leaf garland that I picked up from Daiso. I have seen similar stuff at craft stores elsewhere, so you'll have to look for it or use any other type of full garland that you have. So I'm creating a wreath out of this and I just measured it and cut it down and then wrapped it to round on itself. Here I'm applying some hot glue to the wood slice and then putting our wreath into place. Now to decorate it, I am just making a simple little lace bow and adding that to the top of the wreath. And then again, I am going to be using some twine to create my hanger. Again, you could use an eye screw hook instead. Oh, 
All right, time for a little decoupaging. I've got this beautiful pine cone napkin. You can use any pattern you'd like. Just make sure it is a small pattern. I removed the back layers and then chose my wood slice. Now, one thing I am going to be doing here is just figuring out which pattern or little scene that I want to place on my wood slice. So I cut that out, as you can see here. And then I am going to be using some matte decoupage, applying it to the back, just on the inner portion of our wood slice, as you can see, and then press our little napkin into place. Apply some decoupage on top, and then you can allow it to dry. Once it's dry, I just tear away the excess. I wanted the edges of the napkin to be rough and ragged that just adds to that rustic charm and then again use some string for your hanger so i did the same for this large wood slice and i had this beautiful napkin that had a deer and a tree on it and this time I am going to be adding just a little bit of faux snow onto the wood slice. So it looks like a pretty little wintry scene, as you can see here. Isn't that just so pretty? And then these are all ready to be hung on the tree. So I've got quite the stash of some old Christmas cards that I've saved because I love the looks of them. I also have some old jar lids that are no longer usable for canning. So I'm using a pencil and I'm tracing around the lid of our canning jar. And then I am going to be cutting out the image that I have selected. This particular one has got a beautiful silver snowflake with some script in the back. Fits perfectly. Now I am going to be first gluing the picture onto our lid, as you can see here. And then I am going to be gluing this back into the screw lid. So adding a little bit of hot glue to the inner rim, as you can see, and then placing that lid back inside. Now I'm going to be adding this faux snow onto the inner rim of the lid, as you can see here. And I just add some hot glue and then press the faux snow into place. So this particular faux snow is a mix of just regular and iridescent. I really, really like that look. I think it looks so pretty and adds some shimmer. So I'll just continue to add the faux snow until I've got the inner rim all covered. Here it is all nice and covered and it looks so, so beautiful. So I went and dug into my trims and I've got this beautiful white and silver trim along with some silver garland trim. I am going to cover the outer rim of this ornament and I'm just using some glue and I found this trim that was the exact width of this ornament. Again, we're just gonna use our hot glue and quickly press our trim into place. So as you can see here, the rim of the lid is still showing a bit. So I am using this silver garland and gluing that into place just to camouflage it. You could add some faux snow there as well instead or something else that you have in your stash. Just have a look and see what you can find. So I cut out a circle that will fit the back side of this ornament because I wanted it to be nice and clean on the back side as well. I didn't want it just looking like a canning lid. But first I added my hanger just using some silver string. Again, just created a loop and tied a knot. I'll glue that into place as you can see here. After you have your string in place, you can then add some hot glue all over the backside of the lid and then quickly 
place your paper circle into place and then it's finished as is if you desire but i'm taking it one more step and i'm adding this beautiful glittered snowflake that i had in my stash and i just wanted to create some dimension on the inside of this ornament so i glued that into place and then it's ready to be hung on the tree so i had found these old um they look like galvanized tin lids and I thought they would be beautiful for an ornament. So again, I'm using my cutting machine and I cut out an image from this beautiful card. I knew it would look so beautiful inside this lid, but I didn't want the image to set back so far as this lid is quite deep. So I'm adding some strips of some foam tape. I do add a double layer of this foam tape. So again, I am using some faux snow, but this particular faux snow does not have the iridescent flakes inside. And I am adding it to, again to the inner rim of our lid, as you can see here. I was just checking to make sure that my card will still fit inside, and it did. So once I have that inner portion all covered, you can then remove the backing from your foam tape and then apply it to the back side of our rim. I am just adding a little bit of hot glue here and there just to reinforce our card. So I wanted to again create a little winter scene. So I have this cute little deer and it's actually a button. I just cut the back of the button off and then I'm gonna glue that little guy into place. I will try to have the link for that in my Amazon favorites. And then I have this pretty little antique white little bottle brush tea tree and I did cut some of the bristles off on the back side and then added some hot glue and put that into place so now I wanted just to make it look like there was like some bushes and shrubs for the deer to walk on and I added that full greenery there and now I am adding again my string to hang my ornament same as always add a little knot and then glue it into place as you can see here. So I just wanted to add just a little bit more of a decorative element. You don't have to do this part, but I decided to add this greenery around the rim of our lid. I just thought it finished it off really nicely. And there you go, some beautiful little ornaments for our tree. So I thought for something fun and different, I would dig into my craft sticks. You'll need six long ones, three short ones, and just one extra one just to help keep things all nice and straight. I'm using some tape just to help hold all my pieces in together, as you can see here. And then using my hot glue, I am going to brace all the long pieces together. I add one to the bottom, one to the top, and then I'll remove the tape and add one in the middle. So as you can see, it is taking on the look of a farmhouse door. I love how that looks. Now, this is something different and I wanted to try for quite a while. I am painting this entire piece with some tea and you want to coat the whole thing. This is just regular black tea and then you're going to want to let it dry. So this next part is a vinegar rust solution. I soaked some rusted metal pieces in some vinegar and allowed it to corrode. And I am going to apply this solution onto our wood piece. And what will happen is a chemical reaction. 
I will have the video for this listed in my playlist so you can see the original as it will have everything outlined for you in the description box. So as you can see, there's already a chemical reaction taking place and look, isn't that so cool? Look how it has changed. I think it looks so neat. It definitely looks like an old farmhouse door. Now it is time to decorate our door. I am using an old button as the doorknob and then I'm going to be creating a little wreath out of our faux leaf garland. Again, I picked this up at Daiso and you can use anything you'd like. I have seen uh, little miniature wreaths at craft stores as well. So you'll have to just have to have a look around. So just for another little decorative touch, I am just making a simple jute twine bow and I'm just making it to size and then I'm going to glue it into place onto my wreath. I'm taking another piece of jute twine. I'm just figuring out the placement and I'm going to glue that into place and that'll create a beautiful little hanger. So Dollar Tree has carried these door ornaments for the last couple of years. Again, I'm not sure if they'll have them this year or not, but I thought they'd be so fun to dress up. So I'm just removing all the embellishments and the glue. I'm also remembering the hanger, as you can see here. And then I am going to just take a sanding block. And then you're gonna want to sand off the glitter and any of the rough edges use a cloth to remove the dust. So I dug into my stash of chalk paint and I'm using this really pretty vintage color and it's put out by Deco Art. I'm going to give this door two to three coats of our chalk paint and I'm allowing it to dry well in between. Now I'm using chalk paint because it really has good adhesion and coverage. You're going to make sure that you paint all sides of your door. Once dry, you can then antique it by using some gel stain. This is some gel stain that I got from Deco Art. Again, I'll have it linked in my Amazon favorites. I am using a brush and applying it all over to, you know, the edges of our door panels. And then I'm using a rag to wipe it off. This particular gel stain is in walnut. I am going to continue to apply the stain and wipe it off with our rag until I get the desired look I like. Once dry, I am then going to take my sanding block and I'm gonna distress and remove some of that stain that you can see. That'll just create a more distressed look and make it look like an old vintage antique door. I'm just going to continue to go in and add some stain in different spots and use my rag to wipe it off. And I'm just going to go back and forth with my gel stain and my sanding block until I get that old antique door look. So now I am going to use a button again for the doorknob. Again, using some hot glue to put it into place. And then I'm going to repurpose that little wreath that it came with, but I'm going to remove those berries along with the bow that it came with. I am going to take this garland apart and then I'm going to reshape it just so it's a little bit more full as you can see here and I also thought it was a better size for this piece so I just added some hot glue and put that into place and then I decided to add a lace trim bow to the top so it's just going to be a really simple bow I just create my loops and then use a wire and that's it
Again, I'm just gonna use my hot glue and put my little bow into place at the top of the wreath. I think it just has a beautiful vintage Victorian look to it. I think it's just so, so pretty. And then I am going to be adding my twine hanger. I got this twine from Michael's a couple of years ago. It is white and it's got like a gold thread through it. So I am adding some tape on the one end and then I'm going to thread it through the holes on our door. So once you have those ends poked through the holes, you can just tie some knots to prevent it from going back through and then it's ready to hang on the tree. You can paint these doors in any color you like. I have a selection of some vintage colored doors here to show you. So I found these a four inch grapevine wreaths at my thrift store. I have seen them, seen them in craft stores as well. So you'll have to have a look around. And then I'm also going to be using these bottle brush trees. So I removed the base and I'm just figuring out my placement and I'm going to hot glue those trees into place on the inner part of our grapevine wreath. I'm just creating a pretty little winter scene on the inside of this wreath. I thought that would be something that's really fun. Here I have my faux snow and I always like to use hot glue and then press the snow into place. So now I'm going to add my hanger just using some jute twine and you can see I created a loop, brought it through the back side, pulled the two strands up through the loop and pulled tight. You're going to then want to tie off a knot at the top to create your hanger. So I decided to add a few little embellishments. I have some little deer and a little wood snowman. I thought the snowman would be really cute or the deer, either one. You'll just have to see what you have in your stash or what you can find in the craft stores. Just add a little hot glue and press this into place. You can definitely color these little wood embellishments as well. So now I'm going to be using this cute little mini embroidery hoop. I found this at the thrift store as well, but I have seen them in dollar stores and craft stores. And again, I am going to be using these pretty antique white bottle brush trees. Again, I'll try to have a link for you down in my Amazon favorites. I added some hot glue and then added that little tree at the bottom of the hoop. So to give it a bit more of an antique, kind of shabby, chic, Victorian look, I am adding a little piece of lace at the top, as you can see here. I'm using some hot glue to put it into place. I trimmed off the ends with my scissors, as you can see, on a diagonal. And now I am just going to be using some faux snow. I wanted to just cover up the base of our tree so you can't see the little wire stem that was showing. So next I dove into my clear stamps and I found Merry Christmas. I just stamped it out onto a piece of scrap paper and then I used my scissors to cut it out. So I'm just checking to make sure that my paper fits over the lace and it does. Then using some glue, I just apply it to the back and then put our word Merry Christmas onto the lace. Doesn't that look pretty? I think it just looks so fun. Now to create our hanger, I am again using this 
twine that's got the gold thread and I just add it to the top where the screw is for our hoop. Pull it tight, tie a knot, and you've got a beautiful Victorian ornament for your tree. So I've always liked the look of vintage spools and I found these in my local dollar store. I have seen them at other craft stores as well. I wanted to make mine look old so I'm using my gel stain and I'm applying it to the top and bottom portion of this spool as you can see. For a fun little added touch, I decided to add my favorite a micro glitter paint in the ice crystal and I am going to apply it just to the top and the bottom of our spool and then allow it to dry well. Once the spool is all dry, it's time to decorate it. So I am adding some lace to the center portion of our spool as you can see here and I'm just wrapping it around just a few times and gluing it into place. Next I am using a bottle brush tree and I'm going to glue that to the center of our spool as you can see. I think it looks so cute. And then I am going to decorate our little tree. So I have these vintage buttons in my stash. I am applying one of the buttons to the top of the tree. It looks like a little ornament on the top. And then I have these really pretty heart gems from my stash and I'm going to apply one onto the lace. These are optional. Just decorate these any way you'd like. Now to add our string. To create our hanger, again, form a loop, tie a knot, trim off the excess, and glue it to the top of our tree. You can create these little ornaments in lots of different ways. I just think they're so beautiful and definitely have that vintage look. For our first ornament, I'll be using this mini grapevine wreath, some bells, and some fabric. I'm going to be starting by cutting a strip of fabric and tearing it. I want a really nice rustic frayed edge. You will also need some jute twine. I'm going to cut the jute twine and then string on all the bells and I'll be tying it on with a knot. So once I have all the bells on string, I am going to lay them out in the desired pattern and then I just need to figure out how long I need to make my cluster. Once I've got that figured out, I'll tie them all together and then glue them to the inside of the wreath as shown. Before I glue the bells into place, I am going to add a string to hang my ornament. And I wanted to do that just before I get the bells in place because I didn't want to get things all tangled up. So I will glue the bell cluster in between the string. And then that way here, I know that everything will hang straight. Now using my fabric strip, I'm just going to make a simple bow. I'm not going for a perfect look here. I'm just going to make it and I make adjustments as I go, remove any of the excess threads and trim down as needed. Once you have the size you need, you can glue it into place and there you have a super cute little wreath ornament. So again, I'm going to be making another one, but this time I'm using a bigger wreath. I'm using a larger bell, a larger bow, and I'm going to add some greenery to the top of my bell. I like to use just some remnants that I have in my stash. Here I am making a simple loopy bow and I am going to glue it to the top of the bell. 
I'm just using a thin piece of floral wire to hold my bow into place. And then you can start to tie your bell on and that's the string to hang your ornament. If you're new to my channel, I want to say welcome and I'd love for you to join my community by tapping on the subscribe button along with the bell to keep up to date with everything I have to share. Again, using some hot glue, I am going to glue this bow into place. It is just some natural cotton fabric that I have coffee dyed to really give a rustic look. And here's our first two ornaments. I love the natural country farmhouse look. It has a very primitive vibe to it and they were so easy to make. For our next ornament, you are going to need some walnut stain and this dollhouse furniture that I picked up from Dollar Tree. Using the paintbrush, I am going to apply the walnut stain into all the grooves and the crevices. And then using a rag, I am just going to dip it into some of the walnut gel and stain the whole piece of this furniture. Once it's completely covered, allow to dry well. Now we'll be using some warm white acrylic craft paint and I am going to be coating the entire piece of furniture with two coats, allowing to dry well in between coats. Once the piece is dry, you can take a sanding block and distress the edges. You can use any type of painting technique. It's entirely up to you. I wanted that worn weathered look, so that's why I am sanding off the edges. You could use chalk paint and then use some antiquing wax. It is entirely up to you. So now I'm just taking a cloth and dusting off the piece. So to really help those distressed edges and whatnot really pop, I am using some satin varnish that I picked up from the dollar store. And I'm going to give the entire piece a coat of the varnish. You will see that those distressed marks really pop once you have that varnish on. Allow to dry well. As you can see, I have inserted an eye hook to the top of the dresser and using some twine, I create a hanger. Now I have an assortment of bottle brush trees and I have some ornaments. I'm just going to trim off the bottle brush trees as needed and figure out my placement. And then using some hot glue, I am going to put them into place on the top of the dresser. miniature ornaments that I picked up at a store called Dollarama. You could use miniature toys or dolls. You could also use some bells. Use whatever you have on hand. So I'm just again figuring out my placement and using some hot glue I am applying them to the top of the dresser. I also make sure that I add some ornaments to the back side of the ornament. Now I'm 
using some faux snow and some hot glue and I am going to apply the hot glue to the top of the dresser and pressing the faux snow into that. I just tap it off to remove any of the excess. Here I am just camouflaging the bottle brush tree base and I really like this look. You could just leave it if you'd like, it's entirely up to you. This ornament definitely has a vintage feel. I really think this ornament is a fun and whimsical piece and you can dress it up to suit any decor. For our next ornament, I'm going to be using these wood blocks that I picked up at Dollarama in the children's section. I'm going to be using a triangle and a square. The paints I'll be using are warm white and this deep burgundy. The square I am going to give just a single coat with the deep burgundy. I want the wood grain to show through a bit. And then for the triangle, which will be the rooftop, I am applying the warm white. Allow to dry well. Once dry, I am going in and applying some Vintage Photo Distress Ink and I'm just using a sponge and I'm distressing the edges. It just gives a really vintage, rustic look. Once you have the desired look, allow to dry. Here I have a little wood star embellishment and some espresso craft paint and I'm going to apply a coat to the star and allow to dry well. Once everything is dry, you can start to assemble. So working on a flat surface, I apply some hot glue and then press the bottom part into the roof and the flat surface just makes sure that it's all nice and even. I'm adding the wood star to the front of the house. I'm using some jute twine to make my little ornament hanger and I'm just using some hot glue to apply it to the top. I tried to use an eye hook but the wood is quite strong. You could drill a hole and then add the eye hook but I just chose to use the hot glue. This little house was so easy to make and it has a really cute primitive country style look to it. Perfect for any farmhouse decor. For our next ornament, I'm using this white Christmas tree that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I'm using my espresso paint again. First, I cut off the ornament hanger and then I apply two to three coats of the paint to the tree. I really like this color. It has a rusty look to it which is great for primitive decor. Allow to dry well in between coats. So I have this star embellishment and I give it two coats of this Whisper chalk paint. It's like a warm white and allow to dry well. Once your ornament is all dry, using some jute twine, you can insert it to make your ornament hook. Now using that little star, I am just adding some hot glue to the back and applying it to the top of our tree. Again, this ornament has a beautiful, rustic, primitive country look. I really am liking this look this year. I feel like it's got a warm, cozy feel to it and it was so easy to do. And now for our next ornament, I'm using these burlap treat sacks that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I am going to first start by removing this green string and replacing it with jute twine. So you're going to need to cut two long lengths of the jute twine and I'm tying one end to a paper clip and then I'm gonna be threading that through. You want the jute twine to loop around on one side and then using the other
another piece of jute twine, you are going to do the same procedure, but in the opposite direction. For this next part, it's optional. I am choosing to use some fiber fill. You could use a piece of floral foam if you'd like. It is entirely up to you. It depends on how you want to fill it. Here I'm just cutting off some pieces from a Dollar Tree Christmas tree. I like to use that for arrangements. And here I have an assortment of some different things. These are some presents from some picks and some frosted stems from Dollar Tree. I'm just using some hot glue and I am pushing them down into the fiber fill. This is where you may want to use a piece of floral foam instead. It is completely up to you. You could fill this whole little sack using some candy canes or some little presents, little ornaments. You could even put a little stuffy in there. You could be very creative with how this piece looks. There I had added some pine cones and now I'm going to add these little presents that I had from my stash. I changed out the gold cording and I am just going to tie some jute twine around it just to give it a lot more of a natural look. I had this birch bark piece in my stash so I am going to add that as well. I love to use natural elements whenever I can in my decor. Now I'm creating the ornament hanger. I'm gluing one end of jute twine to one side of the sack and gluing the other end to the other side. And then I kind of work the strand in throughout my little arrangement. So here I decided to give the sack a little bit more um, character and I just glue the creases and I hold those into place. I don't know, I kind of like the look of it. I think it makes it a bit more genuine. I also am going to glue those strings to the side just to help keep them out of the way so they don't get tangled up on the Christmas tree. I really like how this little treat bag turned out that I picked up from Dollar Tree. You again can decorate it any way you'd like. I think it is a very fun piece to have. For our next ornament, I'm using some coffee dyed fabrics. I have natural cotton and this black and white checkered. This piece here is not coffee dyed, but I just really like the way it looked. I am going to be cutting some strips and tearing it and then removing the threads. I am going to be doing this for all three fabrics. It doesn't really matter how many pieces you make. It's entirely up to you. And then I also cut some strands of the jute twine. I have also cut two lengths of jute twine that are a lot longer than all the others. Now I am going to be layering my fabric and my shorter pieces of jute twine in my hand and I'm going to be staggering them just to create a really relaxed and rustic feel to the fabrics. So now I'm going to lay out one of my longer pieces of jute twine, lay the fabrics on top and tie off in the middle. So now I'm pulling all the pieces down and then I'm going to adjust the length of all of my fabric and strings by pulling on them. Just be careful that you don't pull them all right out. 
So now I'm gathering them at the top and using my other length of jute twine, I am going to wrap it around to hold all those pieces together and then tie it off in a knot. So I have these wood beads that were in my stash. I really like this large one here with the star. I am going to string them onto my jute twine. This first one is covering up the knot that was at the top. I add the large one and then another small one. And then I'm gonna tie a knot at the top of the beads to hold it all tight. I have this simple little bow that I made out of the checkered fabric and I'm just using some hot glue and I'm going to tie it to the top there of the cluster to hide that knot. And then I'm going to knot off the top string to create a hanger for our ornament. And there you have a very primitive tassel ornament. I really love the country farmhouse Christmas look of this tassel. I think making a bunch of these would be beautiful to use in your tree, even as gift toppers. I purchased this little sled ornament from Dollar Tree, and I am going to be cutting off the jute twine that came with it. Next, you'll need a sanding block to remove some of that image that's on the front as we don't want that to show through our paint. Using my favorite chalk paint in Whisper, which is like a warm white, I am going to apply two coats to the entire sled. I am going to be using some walnut gel stain and applying it to the entire sled. You could also use some antiquing wax. Just use whatever you have on hand and then allow to dry well. I'm using a small paintbrush just to get the stain into all the corners. Once the stain is dry, I now take a fine grit sanding block and I am going to distress it, just exposing the paint color that's underneath. I really like this look. Again, it gives a very rustic vintage look to the piece. Now I'll be using a bottle brush tree and I'm removing the base and then I'm going to be adhering this little branch and gluing it to the bottom of this bottle brush tree. It'll give it a really nice natural look. Now I'm going to be trimming off the back side of the bottle brush tree. This will allow the tree to sit more flat onto the sled and I use hot glue to attach it. Then using some jute twine, I am going to wrap it around the sled and then tie it off around the bottle brush tree. So I'm gonna use some jute twine again to create an ornament hanger. I'm just using some tape to help me thread the twine into the small holes on the sled. Once you have both ends threaded through, tie a knot on the back side to prevent the twine from slipping through. Now I'm going to be using some faux greenery from my stash and I'm just trimming it down. Again, trimming the back side so that they lay flat against the sled. I have 
this birch bark star and I am going to glue that to the middle of the greenery. This sled definitely has that old country farmhouse Christmas look. I absolutely love how this turned out. So I'm going to be doing something a little different here. I had picked up these felt kits from Dollar Tree in the fall. I am going to dismantle all the pieces from the package and then I am going to follow the image on the top portion of the packaging and using some hot glue I'm going to piece all these critters together. I'm just going to show an example using the fox. You could use some wet glue if you'd like. I chose to use some hot glue. So once you've got your critter all pieced together, I am going to be using some Whisper chalk paint. It's again, like a warm white. And I am going to give one to two coats over the entire felt piece. Now you could try to use craft paint, but I found that I had better coverage using the chalk paint. I just want to subdue the bright colors of these felt pieces. I apply some chalk paint to the back side as well and then allow to dry well. Once dry, I had decided to add some fine glitter paint in iridescent. This will give it a really cute little whimsical look. I love creating woodland pieces for my Christmas tree and I thought these felt decorations would be perfect for that. I give two coats of the glitter paint and then I allow it to dry well. Once dry, I am now going to glue on some jute twine to the back of the ornament. Now, I am gluing one end to the head and then the other end to the tail. That way here, it'll hang evenly on the tree. I do the same technique for the owl and hedgehog as well. I love how these little critters turned out. I think they are such an inexpensive and unique way to create some ornaments for your tree. I got these mini figurines and these mini trees from Dollar Tree and I had these clothes pins in my stash. Using some hot glue I'm going to apply it to the top of one of the clothes pins and press it down into some faux snow. Continue till you have the top covered. I use some scissors just to trim off any of the excess. So I picked up these figurines from Dollar Tree in the springtime. I have got this little deer. I use some hot glue and attach it to the top of the clothespin. Then I attach the mini tree to the top of the clothespin right beside the deer. The base had fallen off, so I just used some hot glue to reattach it. So I do the same thing for the second clothespin, but this time I'm using a cute little gnome. These little clothespin ornaments are so easy to make and so effective. I again love the woodland look of these pieces. I have these little vintage tins that I had in my stash. And I am going to use this cute vintage scrapbook paper 
and I am going to trace around the round tin and I'm just figuring out the placement as I do want that cute little deer image to show. I'm just tracing around the tin and then I'm going to cut out the circle and then I am going to use a mixture of some tacky glue and some hot glue and I'm going to apply it to the inside of the back tin. So I have this wired tinsel garland that I picked up from Walmart two years ago and I am going to use some hot glue and glue it to the inner rim of the tin. This way here it just frames out the image. You could use a pipe cleaner if need be. So again, using some faux snow and some hot glue, I am going to attach it to just underneath that cute little deer. I didn't want it to look like he was just floating around. So I just was creating a base. Again, using a bottle brush tree, I am going to snip off part of the base as well as trim off the back side of the little tree. Again, that'll just allow it to lay flat against the tin background. And I use some hot glue to attach it. I'm using some hot glue and faux snow just to cover up the base of the little tree. Again, using some faux greenery from my stash, I am just going to glue those into place. You can decorate the inside of these tins any way you'd like. Some little bells would be cute inside too. I am going to be using some mini ornaments again, and I'll just use some hot glue to attach those as well. Now I'll be using some baker's twine and I am going to make a little loopy bow and then glue that into my little greenery cluster. I'm using some more baker's twine and I'm going to create a loop and I'm going to glue it to the back side of the tin to create my ornament hanger. For our next tin ornament, I have already covered the back using some scrapbook paper. I got these iridescent pipe cleaners from Michaels and I am going to outline the scrapbook paper with the pipe cleaner. Here I've got this vintage white bottle brush tree. I'm removing the base and then generously applying some hot glue. I'm going to attach this cute little vintage ornament to the bottom. Again, trimming off the backside of the tree so it lays flat against the backing of this tin. I have this pretty little lace bow in off-white and I'm adding some hot glue and then I'm going to attach it to the base of the tree. That'll just really finish it off nicely. Now I'm going to create a loop using that same lace and I'm going to glue it to the back of the tin and that'll create our ornament hanger. And for our next tin ornament, I'm using some faux snow and I'm going to generously apply hot glue to the back and press the faux snow into it. 
I am also going to be using this faux garland pipe cleaner that I had in my stash and I am going to frame out the snow. So before I add my figurine, I am going to use some jute twine and I'm forming a loop and glue it to the back of the tin for my ornament hanger. And then I am going to figure out where the figurine is going to line up to the back side of the ornament, add some hot glue to those points and then put the figurine into place. I again, I'm using some hot glue and some faux snow and add it to the base of the figurine. I love how these little tin ornaments turned out. I think these would make beautiful Christmas gifts. For our next two ornaments, I'm going to be using these wood pieces I picked up from the dollar store. I have this treat bag that I got from Dollar Tree and I am going to cut out a square piece of paper and I'm going to trace around the round ornament and then cut out a piece of the paper. So I did cut out a little notch at the top of the paper so it slips underneath that little piece on the top. Generously applying some tacky glue, I am going to apply it to the ornament and then using a card to spread it out. I like to use tacky glue rather than Mod Podge. I find that it doesn't bubble on me the way Mod Podge does. And also then I don't have to apply any glue to the on upper portion. So now I apply the paper and then I press it out using a bone folder. Once dry, I then use some scissors and just trim off any excess paper there might be. So this part is optional. I have decided to use some leaf green paint and paint out the top portion of the ornament as well as the backside and the edges. Once dry, I am going to add two coats of my favorite fine glitter paint. It is iridescent. I love this glitter paint. I think it's so pretty. You can pick it up at any craft store. So now I'm also going to apply some chunky glitter paint. This is called Galaxy Glitter Paint. I really like the way this looks. I picked this up at my local dollar store. It is put out by Deco Art. I have got this joy felt word that I got from Dollar Tree and I had coated that with the glitter paint as well. Using some hot glue, I attach it to the front of the ornament. Here I have a piece of that iridescent pipe cleaner and I'm going to just add it to the base of the ornament top just to camouflage any seams from the paper. And using some baker's twine, I'm just creating a loop to hang my ornament. For our next wood ornament, I am going to be using some Christmas sheet music. 
I will trace around the wood tree and then cut out my image. Again, I'm going to be using tacky glue and the same as before, I'll generously apply the glue to the wood piece and put the paper into place. So once dry, I thought I would try using a fine grit sanding block and remove any of the excess bits of paper around the edges. So I did cover up my ornament hook hole, so I'm just using a bamboo skewer and poking that through. And then again, using my favorite glitter paint, I am going to apply two coats to the top as well as some of the galaxy glitter paint. I will have the names of my glitter paint down in the description box below. Once dry, you can now embellishment the front of your ornament. I created this little mini wreath using that silver garland that I picked up from Walmart and I'm just using hot glue to attach it to the front. I am then going to use a cute little vintage lace bow and using some hot glue, add it to the base of the wreath. And then I'm going to attach some lace for my ornament hanger. I have this cute little star embellishment and I'm going to use some hot glue and attach it to the top just to finish this ornament off. I love how these ornaments turned out. I love the shimmer from the iridescent glitter and they definitely have a vintage vibe to them. I have got some Pinterest inspired snowman ornaments to share with you. I'm taking some wood slices that I picked up from the dollar store and this mini popsicle stick. I am going to glue all the pieces together. Here I've got these silver gems and I'm going to be painting them with some black nail polish to use as embellishments for the face. Another option would be to use some black Sharpie pen. I'm using three different sizes of the gems and then I will be allowing them to dry well. I am now gonna go in with this ice crystal fine glitter paint and I am going to add it to the wood slices just to give a really nice shimmer as the light bounces off of them. If you're new, I wanna say welcome and I'd love for you to join my community by tapping on the subscribe button as well as the bell to keep up to date with everything I have to share. Once dry, you can go in and add your gems. I'm using the large ones for the buttons and I'm going to be applying them with some hot glue. Before I add the face on, I am going to adhere the hat 
and I am going to be making that out of a piece of cotton. So I'm just making a hem using some hot glue and then I'm wrapping the hat around the top portion of the snowman head. Trim and glue the pieces together as needed. a piece of yarn and I am going to be tying a knot off to form a loop and then I'm going to be gluing this inside the top part of my hat to form a place to hang the ornament on the tree. Once I have my hanging loop in place, I am going to use another piece of yarn and tie off the top part of the hat. Now I will add the rest of the gems to form the face. little scrap of yarn to form the nose. You could use a little piece of felt, a sharpie marker, whatever you would like to create the nose. I'm adding some orange paint just to make it look like a carrot. I'm using a strip of the smallest gems to create the mouth. I have this really nice decorative chunky yarn and I've cut it down into some sections and I'm going to wrap the pieces around the snowman's neck, then glue it into place. Another option would be to use a strip of fabric or some ribbon. And there you have a cute little rustic snowman. Feel free to add some arms if needed. For our next snowman, I'm using this salt and pepper shaker. You can get these at Dollar Tree or any dollar store. I'm gonna fill it up with some iridescent faux snow that I had picked up from Dollar Tree last year. I'm using a foam ball as the head and I'm going to use some hot glue along the rim of the jar and then applying the foam ball. I'm going to be using the fine shimmer glitter paint on the head just to give a little added touch of some shimmer. Again, I'm going to be using a piece of yarn as my hanger and I'm going to be using the lid as the hat for the snowman. So create your loop and then use a pokey tool to thread the yarn up through the holes on the lid. Use a dab of hot glue to hold the yarn knot into place.
Again, using hot glue, I'm going to add some to the rim of the lid and then attach it to the head of the snowman. Now I'll use a Sharpie and add the face. I'm using some vintage buttons and using some hot glue and attaching them to the glass to create the body of the snowman. Now I'm using this really pretty decorative chunky yarn and creating a scarf by wrapping it around the neck of the snowman. I'll use a dab of hot glue to help hold it into place. And there we have two really nice Pinterest inspired snowman ornaments. I love the way this rustic one looks. I love the shimmer of the glitter paint on it. And I really like the look of this glass one. It looks very vintage and I love the way the light glows through the glass. Uh, you are going to need a little frame. I got this one out of my stash. It's an old one. The glass is missing and I just removed the tabs from the back. Here I have some mini dowels again from my stash. I am just going to cut them down to size so they fit the inside of the little mini frame. So now I am going to use some hot glue to adhere these mini dowels to the inside of our frame. I'll be using the hot glue in the center of the frame on the top and the bottom and again on the sides to apply our second piece. Allow the hot glue to set and once set you can then go in and apply some craft paint in the color of your choice. I am going to be using this beautiful brick red color. It's a nice vintage looking color. I find that with primitive style the colors are really rich and earthy and are darker and give that really nice cozy country feel. So I've given my frame two coats of paint and I've allowed to dry well in between. And now I'm going to distress the edges by using a sanding block. Once you have the desired look, you can then go in with a rag and remove the dust. So now I'm going to be coffee dyeing a selection of fabrics. Here I've got the fabric soaking and I placed them in a tray and then I put those in an oven to dry. And as you can see, they come out a lot darker. They have a really earthy look to them. Here I decided to make the lighter colors darker by adding more coffee. And then you can choose the fabric of your choice. You can see the difference between these two pieces of fabric here. And I'm going to cut that fabric down to size. So here I am just measuring the size of my frame and then I am going to take those measurements and measure out my fabric. Here I'm just trimming off a rough edge and then I'm going to take some nice sharp scissors and cut my fabric down. So now that I have my piece of fabric to the size that I want, I'm going to take that piece, fold it in half, and then create two separate panels. So next I'm going to be using some thinner jute twine and I'm going to just take one of those panels and I'm going to gather the piece. Now as you can see it is a little offset from the middle as I am going to be tying the jute twine around that gather and I wanted it to kind of stick above that middle frame portion of that window that we created. So I'm just tying the gather with a basic knot 
and then I'll be cutting off the excess twine. I do the same for both panels. So now I'm going to place my fabric panels. Now I did make these panels a little bit longer as I wanted these panels to glue to the exterior of the frame on the back side. So I'm going to use some hot glue and press the bottom part of the panel into the glue and then I do the same for the top of the panel. first fabric panel in place you can go ahead and adhere the second panel. So at this point you can leave this frame as is but I wanted to cover up the mechanics of my work on the back side. So I'm using this beautiful dark colored scrapbook paper that's got tiny little snowflakes on it and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to trace around my frame. Using my scissors, I am going to cut the cardstock piece out and then flip it back over to the right side. And using some tacky glue, I am going to apply a line of glue all the way around the exterior portion of our scrapbook paper. Once the glue is applied, you can then press your window frame onto the paper. I ended up weighting mine down a bit and allowed it to dry. Here I have this really pretty wood star and again I'm giving it a coat of some craft paint in a really pretty dark green and I allow that to dry. So once everything is dry you can then add some jute twine to the sides of our window panel to create a hanger and then you can go ahead and start to decorate your window if you choose. Here I've got this faux garland. It's kind of like a pipe cleaner that I picked up at a local dollar store. And I'm applying that to the base of our window frame to create a bit of a window box look. And then I find that the primitive country style, they really like to decorate little bits. So I thought I'd decorate the top corner of this frame. So I applied some faux garland there and here I have a strip of my fabric and I'm just creating a loose knot and then I trim it down to size and using some hot glue I will put that into place on top of that garland that's in the corner. You could go ahead and create a bow if you'd like but I really just wanted a casual look for this piece. And then I'll add my really pretty green star on top of the fabric. So one thing I have noticed is that with primitive Christmas style, they use a lot of pip berries. So I am applying some of those pretty pip berries that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I'm just trimming some of them down, applying them into that window box that I created and then you can hang it on the tree. I think this turned out so, so beautiful. I absolutely love how it looks. It definitely has that traditional country charm. So for our next ornament, I'm going to be using a wooden spool some wood slices that are about the same size and some jute twine. Using some hot glue, I'm going to apply those wood slices to the top and bottom of this spool. I love spool ornaments. I just think they're so, so beautiful. And I thought it would be fun to create a really rustic country look. Here I have some black and white gingham fabric that was coffee dyed, and I'm going to cut it down into strips. And then I remove any of the excess threads. 
I'm also going to be using this natural cotton that I had coffee dyed as well. So using some hot glue, I am going to apply that to the inner portion of our spool and then start to wrap the fabric around. And as you can see, I'm applying it very roughly. I don't want this to look perfect. I really want that rustic look. And I think it really creates a nice casual charm, perfect for that primitive style. Using some hot glue, I am then going to just glue down that edge and then I'm going to continue to add some fabric. This one is that natural cotton and I'm going to wrap it around, but I'm going to make sure that some of the fabric from underneath peeks through. I really like the primitive style. I think it has a really a natural country farmhouse look. So now I dug into my stash and I found these country style jingle bells and I am going to use a green one to match that added green fabric that I applied to the spool as well. Using some hot glue, I placed that bell into place and then using some jute twine, I am going to be creating my hanger. So I'm going to create a loop and then tie it off in a knot and cut off the excess twine and I'm going to cut it off really close to the knot. Now you don't have to worry about it unraveling as I'm using some hot glue and applying that to the top. I really, really love Christmas time. So I am really enjoying creating these ornaments for you all. It's my favorite time to craft, honestly. So here I am using all these little bits and I'm applying them to decorate the top side of my spool. Now this part is optional, you could just leave it plain, but I wanted to cover up the glue that I had showing, so I thought adding a little twine bow and some of the faux garland that I had, as well as some pip berries, would be a really nice added touch. If you had some mini rustic bells, that would be really cute all tucked in amongst the garland as well. Once you've got it decorated, it is then ready to hang on the tree. This turned out better than I thought. I really love the rustic charm that this piece has. For our next ornament, I'm going to be using these galvanized stars I picked up from Dollar Tree. Here I am using a sanding block and I'm going to rough up the surface and then you're going to want to use a rag to clean off any of the debris. Once your star is all clean, you are going to then need some hydrogen peroxide with a misting nozzle. I'm going to apply a coat to the surface of our star and then I'm going to apply some regular table salt. You can then flip it over, apply some more hydrogen peroxide, keep your fingers clean, and then you are going to add more salt. So what is going to happen is there's going to be a chemical reaction and some corrosion is going to start to occur. So this was just after 30 minutes and then this is after several hours. And if you wait a full day, as you can see, some rust will form. I rinsed off my star and this is the corrosion I am left with. You could give this a coat of some clear matte spray if you don't want it to corrode any longer but I'm going to allow mine to grow just a bit more. So now I'm going to decorate my star. If you want to corrode your piece a little bit more, then don't decorate it at this time. But I wanted to just show you this step. So I just went ahead and decided to decorate it with my pipe cleaner by forming a wreath and adding some pip berries in a dark red and a regular red. You could add some little bows to this or if you want to add some mini pine cones or bells, 
This is such an easy project and I really love the effect that it has. So here's our star all decorated and I'm going to be using my big chomper. It's just like a crocodile, but a larger one as you can see. And I'm going to punch a hole in the top of the star. So then using some thin jute twine, I am going to create a loop and push that through the hole. And then I'm going to tie it off in a knot and then it's ready for you to hang on the tree. This star definitely has that primitive country Christmas look that we all love. I think it turned out amazing. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I am going to have all the links for you again down in my video description below and the playlist is right here for you to check out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.